to Parky Keeve, we're about a half an hour away from the uh, throw in to, uh, well, I suppose you'll call it an eagerly awaited county final. Um, uh, an always cock meeting between Castlehaven, who have won the championship on two previous occasions, and County Kilty, who have been and won on eight previous occasions. Just been in the uh, boat dressing rooms, and they both uh, look very, very relaxed. Both sets of players eagerly looking forward to what is a huge uh, day for them. County Kilty going to the match, obviously, as underdogs. Uh, because they came through the back door system, I suppose, if you like. Castlehaven came through the more direct route. They go, they come here as favourites. But as somebody said it just a little earlier on, on a day like this, past forum counts for absolutely nothing. Later on in this video, we'll be joining the uh, sports crew in 103 FM, and hopefully, we'll be able to bring you an absolutely exciting hour and a little bit of football that you'll be able to enjoy, not alone now, but for many, many years to come. <laughs> They moved the ball very quickly. 
There you have it, the uh, preliminaries and all the formalities out of the way. The final itself about to get underway with referee Dennis Linehan of Nemo Rangers. He refereed the semi final until that way a couple of weeks ago between Captain Duffy and uh, the main spot of the just trying to estimate the crowd and they reckon maybe up around 15 or 16,000. We'll get confirmation of that a little later on. Dennis Linehan is the match official. Played in one six county uh, finals himself. One foremost of club championships and one three. So he knows a little bit when I say one three, one three all Ireland clubs that's underway here. It comes to Paul Lucknan playing it wing back to Castlehaven. He gives it to Stephen Connolly. Stephen Connolly going to the 45 metre line, playing it up the fast side. Where's one by Frank Allen? A lovely ball for Frank Allen on to Dermot Hurley. Going past the 45 metre line. He should have a cut for a point now. He's making an angle for himself and he's still moving forward. Then he throws the pass outside. And the referee said you probably over carried on that occasion. I'll be going to John Finton in a minute. Where it comes, the free is taken. It comes to Brindley about the referee is back and he's saying that the free now is at the up. Uh, well, I'll have to check this to know what way this free is going. Is he going to throw it in, I wonder? And uh, we'll uh, check. Dennis Linden is the match official here and uh, he's calling for the rear hole. This match official uh, will stamp his authority in this particular match. He let it flow as well. He's going to throw it in. A player from either side. The uh, ball is going to break his knock out. It's caught by the Ferrador in the middle of the path. That's Tony Anglin. Lovely ball from Anglin across the field to Kenny Mead. Kenny Mead in less run behind me. They're a good race on here between two great, great friends. Conrad Murphy and Ray Calley. And they're pairing top minor teams together. And the ball goes out over the line. But the referees are doing a little bit of hooshing over there. Conrad Murphy takes the free. Trying to find Padraig Griffin. 
finds Griffin 45 metres out from goal. He's still making his way forward. He'll be tackled by the team captain for Castlehaven. That's Liam Collins. What's Collins going to do? He's played out as far as Conrad Murphy. No ground game. Murphy's coming in, laying it off. He lays it off to Brendan Welsh. Survivor of 96. Walsh kicks it with the left foot to the go over the bar. It does it. It's the first wide of the afternoon. And uh, I'm joined in commentary position by John Finton Daly. Certainly, John, a great occasion of colour before we start talking about football. Yeah, a great occasion of colour uh, party. We were talking there looking across at the Castle Haven support and the uh, big banner Angels of Haven, which is a fairly unique one. They certainly appear to have more support. They're certainly favourites. And uh, that 40 year old man that you were talking about in the middle of the field, Nike and is just collective possession party. Very steady influence on this young team. This under 21 team, based on the under 21 team of 98 party, only five years ago. And they've really made it here and uh, they're trying to make this their own. But Sally Kinty are really up for this battle party. Whatever they were saying during the week, they're certainly in here to win this game. And I hope that we have a good entertaining open match. Brendan Walsh plays it inside as far as Padre Griffin on the side leg. He's coming to the 20 meter line. He's gone past it. And uh, the ball comes from him. But the referee says he was fouled there and there's going to be a free end. Yeah, Paddy, uh, I doubtful enough I would have thought he threw the ball in at the other end. I think you're nodding there. Uh, he might not have got that free because I thought he actually had his chance to play it. And it's doubtful as he was fouled. One of those dodgy ones in getting football. But it is a free here from the stand side on the left-hand side on the 20-metre line with about uh, <coughs> nearly three minutes gone and a great chance for Conrad Murphy. We'll give you the teams in a little moment from now because there are two minutes gone. We're still awaiting the opening score here in Parkley team. The All-West Cup final, as we say, between Castlehaven and Tuffin and Creed. Uh, Castlehaven with two, Conor Kilty with eight. Championship front of their belt as we watch Conrad Murphy taking this off the 20-metre line. It's heading between the posts. The opening score from Conrad Murphy. And, uh, well, that will settle them down a little bit, John Finton. Very good score party, I remind you a bit of the Johnny Wilkinson style of kicking the way he came up just right over the red spot in the middle of that crossbar party. There was never any doubt about it and even for an inter-county free taker, difficult enough one from, from either angles on the 20 metre line. Good start for Clonic Hilty party. Um, they're certainly in here with a young team, physically no doubt about it, the Haven looks stronger and in all the departments they appear to have the advantage but it's very early days yet. Lee Miles takes the kick out, breaking into the hands of Niall Callahan, laying it off brilliantly there and a good ball up the field by the youngster from Oso O'Leary. O'Leary discarded by another good full back, that's David O'Brien working his way out the field and doing a little bit of minute to chase where it comes to Brendan Walsh, the midfielder. Brendan Walsh plays it off the left foot, maybe can play it off the right as well, then can use the, fair, the fist to give it inside as far as Timmy Anglin, Anglin give it inside to his brother and uh, I should have said Tommy give it into Timmy who lays it back as far as Kenny Mead the week forward. Kenneth Mead trying to get it forward, nobody moving forward for him would you believe, nobody whatever and uh, Conor Kilty then Conor Murphy running on and give it inside where it comes to Paris Colin O'Donovan, a great goal against Skibbereen in the last round, Colin O'Donovan solders it up with the ball taken away from him by one of his own fellas though, it must be the right half back, good play by Niall McCarthy and Niall McCarthy trying to get the ball in, he has got it in as far as the 19 year old and uh, good play inside by Sean Quirk and we're trying to put it onto his left foot uh, but unfortunately for him it's going to have Paddy Hulley's gone and walk about nobody taking him up at all the ball is down the far side of the field and Ian Collins gets as far as Dermot Hulley who's coming as far as his own 20 metre line he's almost approaching 45 he reaches that particular landmark he's tripped from behind and there will be a free is he going to take it? well I don't know whether he took that free or not but uh, he has it now and he's given to Frank Allen took it a top pass on Callan and then tries to bother his way out the referee says he over carried on that occasion Bottles of water coming in already from the scare Castle Haven men, but it's Frank Allen over there who's moving forward. It's a point of no score in favour of Connie Kilty. Give it as far as a man who wasn't there. Uh, I was going to say touched it yet, but he has now. Good play by Castle Haven as they walk their way forward. And it's the person of their centre half forward. I think it was the centre half forward there. I couldn't check it for the moment there, the foul, and we'll see in a minute. And uh, the centre half forward, of course, not the centre forward, it was Dudley Collins, the full forward, and one of the selectors of this team. The free to be taken around the, uh, just outside the 45 metre line. It's already on its way to old Brendan Welsh, I would suspect, and Brendan Welsh collects it. Soling a little bit, and then trying to get past his man, which he did with a lot of ease. Not his own man there, it was Alan Crowley, and uh, he still has a Brendan Walsh. Then he lays it back as far as Potter Griffin. Potter Griffin playing the ball. A ball across the feet to a man who's all on his own and over there. I can know the ball, a good lockdown, but it's got inside. Maybe there will be something on here. Timmy Anglin running on to it. But Ray Callan, Singer and Farber will collect it and he'll give it to Ray Callan. A fifth of an auction here, lays it on the field. And this is Paul Nan, ball and awfully. 
but spent a lot of his time in Canada. His father has come all the way from Canada to watch this man, watch this match, and they tell me that he bought two ice hockey sticks with him, whether he thought there was ice hockey down in Castlehaven or whether they maybe used it down there was only but the ball comes to fellas, Timmy Anglin, and from away out the field, it's a good kick, but not good enough, and it goes off for the second wide of the afternoon for the Canon Kill Timmy John. Yeah, good shot, Paddy, but I'll tell you, I said it to you there, well, I indicated to you there a while ago, Clannon Kildare playing a novel on a square ball, there's very few guys staying inside, and one occasion there, while ago, we had 67 forwards in their men right out around the 45, and when you consider they had the wind behind them, they weren't actually using any sort of true ball in low to the inside forward, but on that occasion, Anglin kicked it from a distance, he was unlucky with just white party, and on the margins at the moment, Clannon a bit more invented, very pacey party, and the dry ball suits them very well, and they're certainly opening up the heat in defence at the moment. Kenny Mead has it, he gives it to Fellas Paul and Griffin from a difficult angle, he kicks wide, number three, for the Connecticut Timmy. The Castle Haven team, in goal we got Lee Miles, I'm trying to check in this full back line for the moment, it uh, would appear that Ginny Callan I think is uh, at right corner back, uh, it is Dean, Dean Callan, Liam Collins is at full back and over on the far side of the field is uh, Alan Sheehy. The half back line sees Paul Upnan, Ray Callan and Tomas O'Leary. The middle of the park is Dermot Hurley and Noy Callan. The half forward line is it Frank Callan, I think it is Alan Crowley and Stephen Conley. The full forward line, Colin Crowley, Bernie Collins and Cody Hurley. We'll give it a uh, kind of guilty team any moment over the ball comes as Ray Callan. And Ray Callan, a long ball up the field, but the referee said there was a foul on Ray Callan as he was kicking that. And I noticed that Ray Callan shook his head there because I didn't think he agreed even with that decision. But uh, the referee is the man in charge. We watch it. Stephen Conley takes this one. A lovely ball up the field from Conley in his fellas. Colin Crowley moving forward, but Crowley's still going forward. Can he put it onto his left foot? He's a good left foot. He's a good right foot as well. And then he lays it back as far as Frank Highland, who gives it back as far as Colin Crowley. Wearing top team, kicking with the left foot. And the ball is caught inside by David O'Brien. And they kind of killed him in, who forward, and it's with Brendan Walsh, coming as far as the 45-meter line. Brendan Walsh is still moving forward, but finding the target man is a difficulty, but maybe he will now. It comes as far as Padre Griffin. Padre Griffin, they say that Liam Collins has the upper hand in quite a number of matches. They played it on the range level. We'll see. Padre Griffin kicks it from a different angle. It's dropping it around the square. It drops wide, and it's wide number four for the county kind of him in. And John Fittling kind of killed me having quite an amount of possession, uh, but unfortunately for them, four wide. Yeah, party, but one very interesting thing about Clan, uh, I know there was a slight wind behind them, but the clearance of the defence there was found Brendan Walsh. There was no hurry clearance. Brendan Walsh came from here to the left hand side near the stand, collected it, and played it down towards the corner. And you must uh, take note there a number of times that Party Griffin is playing in, the corner forward is coming out from that corner, and Party Griffin's been left that space, but he's found it so far very difficult and has, has in, in fact not succeeded in getting inside Liam Collins. And that is the key here to break you up in the Castle Haven defence. And he hasn't done that yet. He's been put under pressure on his right leg. And he's, uh, I think he had one wide and that ball across, which nothing came out of. So, so far, even though Tan on, on the possession stakes are in top party, they've only got the one point, they have a slight win behind them, and really it's too early to really find a pattern yet. The ball is coming out of Timmy O'Sullivan, right corner back up there, in as far as Don Lines and draft back. And Don Lines kicking with the right foot, a lovely ball down into the corner, but there's a fabulous race on here, and there's been won by the Castle Haven number five, Alan Sheehy, who played as far as Paddy Holly. Paddy Holly's first touch, he's got there. Uh, can he get in the ball? He has one possession, he holds on there. Remember, he was the man that played so outstanding the last time they met. That was a way back, I think, in April. And now it comes inside, and Crowley has it. Can he shoot off his left foot? He can't shoot, but into the hands there. And that was Alan Crowley, but the goalkeeper has it. Eamon Hopkins between the goal for a post of Tony Kilty, and he balloons this one right down over the uh, sideline here. Timmy O'Sullivan, David O'Brien, and Colin O'Neill at the full back line. The half back line, Niall McCarthy, Donald Lyons, and team captain Nigel Hayes, whose grandfather. Uh, Sammy O'Donovan won seven county championship medals. The midfield pairing is Brendan Walsh and Tony Anglin. We're watching here a lovely ball across the field of the play, across the face of goal, and it comes to Thomas Paddy Holly. Paddy Holly, he has it. Can he uh, make ground for himself? He's over on the 45 meter line. Solis with the left, Solis with the right, and then a lovely probing ball in as far as Frank Island. Frank Island down deep in, in enemy territory. Is he coming forward? He's still going forward. He's going to shoot for goal, and it's just outside. And there was absolutely nothing whatever in that. We'll give it the remainder of the team and I'll go to John. 
Kitty Mead and Conrad Murphy, Colin O'Donovan at the half forward line, Sean Quirk, Patrick Griffin and Timmy Angden at the full forward line, John Fitton, it could and probably should have been a goal, it's a point to Cannon Kitty, no score, Castlehaven. Yeah, Haven would be very disappointed, Paddy, because they have no score on the board, they've had a number of balls dropped into the goalie's hands while the goal there, the keeper did very well to deal with a, a ball that was hit short, he now injured him and hurt, but he collected that ball and that was eventually cleared wildly out here over there the, on the stand side, which is something Carl haven't done too much. They've been very, very good to actually find the man out of defence without panicking on the ball. But there's a serious problem here now that they'll be worried about being able to have them down. Frat and possibly party having uh, learned there from his previous mistakes, maybe should have punched that ball over the bar from the tight angle that it was. Went for the goal, hit the side netting. The keeper is down injured. And of course, with any Gaelic football team, losing a number one keeper so early in a match can be devastating indeed but with the, from the point of view of the kick outs the tactics and play out of defence and uh, certainly he wouldn't be going down into the party unless he genuinely had a real problem um, I think it might be his left leg he kicks off his right so maybe that's not so bad but he certainly has a problem I don't know if he came into the match with any sort of an injury it seems to be some sort of a twist but uh, it's very early in the day Frank Allen getting a lot of space down the left hand side Bernie Collins party looking menacing when he comes for the ball but he's being well shepherded at the moment by O'Brien and at the other end Griffin is trying to make in rods but failing to succeed so far on um, uh, Liam Collins but uh, thankfully the uh, keeper has recovered no score believe it or not yet for the Haven and 12 minutes gone yes indeed and we have to say congratulations already in the afternoon to the uh, Gabriel Rangers ladies football team they have beat Austin Stacks of Kerry in the Munster ladies football junior championship on a scoreline of Gabriel Rangers 4-15 Austin Stacks 4-11 what a match Frank Allen has it a lovely ball inside Callan goal on here and a wide ball I think it was Alan Crowley who ballooned that well there are two ghost uh, scoring opportunities that went to begging he hit it on the half volley and uh, it looked like it was on its way it didn't make it there we'll talk in a minute and we'll tell you that half time in the Vera Jonah football championship is Garner and Shorgan wreck in that one they've created havoc down there they're leading on a scoreline of 110 to Orton's 1-2 and earlier on this morning it was well earlier on this afternoon I should say it was Belly Gavin who retained the South East Cock Jonah football championship defeating Chapman's 12 points to 5 the ball is inside and the uh, little interception has taken place. It comes far as Niall McCarthy. Good play by Niall McCarthy as he lays it up the field. Who's going to run onto it here? It's that fat man, Ray Kailan. Philip Moore and Singer as he gets the ball away, though. And it comes as far as Timmy Anglin, though. Timmy Anglin trying to find Conrad Murphy. Murphy didn't read it. The man that read it well of all was Liam Collins. Good play by Collins. Out to the far side of the field. But it's over there by Alan Sheehy. Alan Sheehy now giving it as far as Alan Crowley, who's come from centre forward to collect this one. Remember, this is his first full match in four years of football. Out with a serious back injury for all at that time since he was an under 8, 21 and minor star. The ball out over the line, the line ball already taken. It comes as far as Brentley Collins, the big full back forward, and he lays back as far as Colin Crowley. Can he keep the open Castle Haven score? And the answer is that he can and he does. Colin Crowley has kicked the equaliser here after 13 minutes of play, and it's now a point apiece. And that baby, and should probably settle down Castle Haven, John Fitton. Yeah, two of the major uh, forces for the Haven forwards, of course, the two main strike forces there, Colin Crowley feeding off Bernie Collins, who, worryingly enough for Colin Kilty, is in the win possession quite easily off a much smaller full back there in Damon O'Brien. That's going to be a big problem, party. It's going to become a bigger problem when the Haven get more possession and when they have the win behind them. A switch in the half back line for Clonic Kilty, where Nigel here, the team captain, has gone into centre back. That's an attempt I'd imagine to call uh, Alan Crowley, but good play there by the ref corner back, and that was Colin O'Neill who came out and collected, gave it as far as lines up, as far as Griffin. Griffin wins it, then loses it, and into the hands of Liam Collins, who comes out and takes it away. Liam Collins then tries to lamp it up the field, but it came off Kinney Bean, and it's going to be a sideline ball to the Castlehaven men in their own half of the field, just about to be taken by Dermot Hurley. And we watch Dermot Holly right down here underneath this kicky sideline ball from his own 65, balloons it forward. Colin, Colin O'Neill is rising for it and collects a good play by O'Neill. Can he find uh, Colin O'Donovan? Daddy does, and O'Donovan then lays it off quickly. Far as Tommy, Tony Anglin. Anglin just decides to let it forward where it comes up by Lee Collins to Paul Lucknan. And Lucknan is moving forward to Niall Callan. Niall Callan, the fisted pastor, Ray Callan of no relation, who gives it out the far side. 
and away come the Castlehaven in the person of Tomas O'Leary. O'Leary coming as far as the 45 metre line and beyond and then deciding that he's going to add well a dot to the wide statistics but the goalkeeper is out, the goalkeeper is aiming half. Recovered thankfully from his injury and then decides to leave it forward and a poor, I was going to say a poor ball, it was a poor enough ball but it's intercepted there by Paul O'Connor who gives it away. Callan, uh, Noy Callan, I should say Noy Callan to Dermot Hulley. Hulley's going to lay it up as far as Dini Callan and Dini Callan will leave it on as far as Colin, not Colin Crowley but Alan Crowley, Alan Crowley will leave it out as far as Paulie Hulley, back as far as Frank Callan in the city circle and a little interchange this man Stephen Conley has it and he kicks it good and through and over the bar, Stephen Conley. Kicky a mighty point to make it two points to Castlehaven, a point to Conor Kilty in this, the TSB scene of football final. It'll give us an opportunity to say hello to a few people who are uh, listening uh, all over the world this afternoon or this morning or whatever on our website www.103fm.ie. First of all, we say hello to Deirdre Scannell and Sinead Hallahan. There, uh, well, Deirdre is from Conor Kilty. Sinead Hallahan happens to be. Uh, after falling in love with Clanny Kilty and they're on a world tour. This afternoon they're listening to us down or up, I'm not too sure, in Bali, obviously cheering on Clanny Kilty as Kenny Mead walks his way through. Mead shoots and kicks it off the post. And this is an opportunity. Can Timmy Anglin get onto the end of it? Anglin has it. Always trying to find another player in a better position than himself. He finds Murphy. This is a kick from Murphy. This is going to drop. Uh, just can he be kept in play? Goes off out for a wide ball. And adding to the wide's tally. Already there are five wides to the men of Johnny Kilty. And certainly before this day, they could do maybe one or two of those opportunities. Also listening to us in various parts, Uno Donovan, she's from Castlehaven, she's listening down in South Curry. Edmund Cleary and uh, Ellen, is, uh, they are listening in a place called Yonkers in New York City. And uh, who else we have to say hello to? Down in Manhattan we've got Declan Collins and Eamon O'Neill. We probably have a few more, I'll talk to them in. They're the pair in Auckland but they don't get up for a while yet. But there's a man here without to get up early in the morning. That's Brittany Walsh who's kicked the equaliser for County Guilty. It's two points apiece. Yeah, that great score party from um, uh, from Brendan Walsh, one of their old warriors. I think one of three survivors from '96. A very, very good score off his left leg, and uh, you know, not easy there coming in from that angle with three or four blue jerseys hanging off of him. Um, they would have been worried about the whites they've had. But remember, uh, Haven have had whites at the other end as well, and it's really finely balanced at the moment. And you wonder as the game goes on, will the physically stronger Haven side come out on, uh, on top uh, purely on the, the, I suppose, from the point of view of the physical conduct, wearing down the smaller team? Difficult to say, party. You know, Callan takes the piece from his Paul Lockman, who gives it to Big Dermot Hurley, the inspirational uh, midfielder for Castaven. He's coming forward. He gives it back to Callan again. Callan moving forward, carrying a little bit of a tie injury into this game. He gives it to a oh, lovely ball inside in the wake of Castlehaven. Stephen Conley giving a lovely ball in, and this man Crowley kicking with the right foot, not Crowley, but Bernie Collins, and this time Bernie Collins reckons he got a point. And uh, John Fitton Daly, what do you make of that? Yeah, probably a very close thing. I thought it did curl in at the very last moment, but I wondered if it curl in after already going over over the top of that bar. Very difficult. I thought it was going to curl in, but the umpire has called it anyway. And they're the ones that go fire against you from time to time. Scores at a premium here. 18 minutes gone. Only four points to the board in total. When you consider it's a fine day here, a bit, bit cold, of course, but uh, very little wind, certainly no rain. And there's a sub already. Number 19 party is already coming on for Sam very early in the game. Yes, Noel McCarthy, he's been asked to take a break for the moment and coming on instead of him is Mark Griffin. And uh, Noel McCarthy had cousins taking part in the uh, Skeeter Skull pageant that took place uh, earlier on. I'll find those in a minute. They were Yvonne Hurley and Sarah Moxley down there from Dribble League. So uh, the event from uh, Kanye Kilty making changes and uh, surprising the changes were made so early, particularly Castlehaven have only uh, scored two points. So I think the Fitz are the pop around this particular neck of the woods right now. The ball coming from Dermot Hurley who lays it across the field there as far as Tomas O'Leary. O'Leary the Scholar coming to the 65 and then lashing it inside. The full back has to come. He has come all right, but he's missed it and Dermot is the reason why the ball knocked away from the referee. Dennis Linehan said there was a tackle came in from behind but Dennis Linehan right up with the play as he always is. The best dressed uh, match official off field and uh, probably on field as well, even though there's a uniform uh, 
outfits now for these guys coming down the field here. Is it Nigel here, the team cap? Not Nigel here, Colin. There's a big, huge uh, chunk of ground got missing as Colin O'Donovan skidded onto the ground. Remember, he was the man that scored that all important goal. And Padraig Griffin, how many goals has he scored? Surely he was injured there, I thought. And uh, he's uh, shoved out over the line on that occasion by uh, Lee Collins, the referee said quite legally so. Padraig Griffin, remember, he was the guy who got that all important goal that kept him in the match against UCC when they looked like they're going out the door. And then in the replay, he scored again himself in John Kirk. Timmy Anglin got the goal uh, against Yall. But here, the ball has come into the hands of Donald Lyons. There's two points apiece here in the final in Parking Game. And they're the free in the County Kilty. We'll uh, have uh, further scores any moment now. And Father Griffin about to take uh, this one. And uh, the referee pointed to the exact spot. It's Mark Griffin who has come up to take it. Not too sure that Mark Griffin takes three from that particular neck of the woods. Or is it going to be Conrad Murphy? Already got one, has got one point to his credit. Can he get another one, John Finton? Yeah, po uh, quite possibly, Paddy, just on the, on the edge of the semicircle. But if you might notice uh, below, uh, Paddy Griffin is quite shaken after that last tackle. And I'll tell you, Paddy, his knees at the moment, I'd say he's wobbling a bit. He got a right wallop down by the, by, by the uh, stand side here. Um, Conrad Murphy standing over this, but we'll have to keep an eye on Griffin Party as he recovers from that, from that last physical contact. Yes, it's Conrad Murphy uh, about to take this one. He kicks it with the right foot, and uh, it's sailing better in the post. The answer, Bernard's white flag indicates that Conrad Murphy has got kind of his second and kind of guilty his third point of the game, both of them from freeze. So Conrad Murphy opening up a uh, one point lead is three points to two. The ladies football, County Junior B football final championship in Kilmory. A goal in the last minute by Dramina in shoes. They have defeated Ross Carberry in a scoreline of 2-6-2-1-8. Uh, Didn't rely to play ladies football in Dramina, but they haven't played well. Up the field this time, and Castlehaven trying to get position. Ball goes out over the line. It's going to be a line ball for Clough Nakita. They come into this match having been beaten by Castlehaven, comprehensively beaten, it must be said, by 116 to 19. They drew then with UCC in the uh, second round, and uh, on that occasion, looking to get the draw, it must be said as well, but the ball here with Conrad Murphy, surely he was pushed there. And Conrad Murphy goes out over the end line. A bit of a low going on there between himself and Denis Callan. Right, good belting match right now. Murphy and Callan, and there's a peacemaker after coming in. And Denis Callan is thrown to the ground there by Colin O'Donovan. And uh, the referee is calling over Colin O'Donovan there. He, the referee is going to take out his notebook. He's reaching down to the sock for the boiler. And uh, very much a meal out of nothing, I would say, John. Yeah, party, but really there was no need for that because the free was given to Clan, and I don't know if Dini Cahillan fully realised that, but he went to pull the ball away from uh, uh, from the Conrad Murphy, and he's got a card which was totally unnecessary because the free was already given, and if the player looked at the ref, he would have seen it was given, and all he's succeeded in doing now is getting a card, and that can be very expensive, party. People might think that yellow cards don't matter. They matter an awful lot because he committed any sort of a rash foul later in the game. He's off this game, you know, so. Um, Conrad Murphy has a great chance here from the left. Remember, the free earlier on was very well taken. This is much, much further out. And even though it's only 30 yards out, um, when you look at it from the, the from the, from the markings, it's actually way out from the sideline. Colin Conrad Murphy kicks this one. It's heading in the right direction, but there's a massive leap inside by Dermot Hurley. And leap with ball in hand. He's out the field. Good play by Murphy. He's fouled from behind, and they'll be free out to Canic, uh, Castle Haven. I, was, I think as far as the UCC first game in the replay, Canon Kilty won that 2 11 to 14 points. Griffin and Sean Quirk getting very important goals. Y'all, it's 1 13 to 10 points. And Danny Buckley, 2 7 to 1 9. And Griffin getting two goals on that occasion. And then that semi final two weeks ago, the sensational victory over Skibbereen, 1 11 to 1 9. And the goal coming from Colin O'Donovan. The Havens path to the final was a little bit more direct. Four played, four win, no missing. Out of position here. The Canada Kilty men are playing the better football right now in this scene, a football championship match, it must be said. Three points to two, they lead. The man is uh, Brindy Watts, a lovely ball up the field. As far as Paul and Griffin, Griffin shoots and wide and probably should have gone for a score. But Canada Kilty, they have uh, something like six wide John Finton daily. They're playing the better football, but there's still only one point ahead. That's all chances missed the ball hills, but that was a long ball, and that's the kind of thing that Clan, in fact, party, I think, is the first occasion in this entire first half, and we have 24 minutes gone, where Clan managed to tread a ball through the Padre Griffin, where he's most dangerous, which is in the side of the penalty box. But I'm looking at him, party, since the um, 
since the fracas he had out here on the sideline earlier on, I think he's been shaking a little bit, and I think he kicked that ball a little bit um, rashly. He could have taken his point, and uh, instead of that, he went for the goal, and really, I don't think it was on. He was too far out. He didn't get a good stab at the ball, and he drove it wide, and these wides are expensive because one feels that Caden are playing well with him themselves at the moment, and Clan will need to get every chance that comes their way to stay in this match. The reason why there's a break in play is that Bernie Collins has been down injured. We're waiting till there. Uh, there are three people in Auckland in bed right now. It's, uh, they tell me it's around half four in the morning, Monday morning over there. And we're waiting for them to get up before we can say hello to them. They're waiting for the second half of this particular match. And uh, we'll have fun to score. But here we watch Paul Ocknan coming forward. The Canadian, uh, well, the awfully born domicile in Canada for a while. Then he met up with Dinny Callahan and uh, Dinny convinced him that he should come home and play football here in West Cork with Castlehaven. I'm sure he's delighted that he has made that particular move. The ball is with Alan Crowley. Alan Crowley playing it inside as well as Colin Crowley. Brothers combining and Colin Crowley kicking it inside and over the bar from Colin Crowley to tie the game up. It's his second point of the match and Colin Crowley has got two. It's three points apiece. The Premier Minor Holding County section final. Half time there. Belly here. And uh, they have one guy in from this call as well. They're leading on the scoreline of seven points to Newtown Shandon five. I thought it would be a, a little bit more uh, direct than that one. And uh, Belly here, certainly the strong favourites in that particular holding match. We'll have the final score on that as it comes up and maybe more. It's three points apiece here in a final where. John Finton Daly said to me before the game that Conor Kilty would be in his first 10 at the start of the year. Well, they're here now and here at Merritt and they're level pegging with Castlehaven and we've got 26 minutes of this first half gone. A score before half time for either side would be vital. A goal would be absolutely so uh, much more vital if you like. Mark Griffin come forward with the left foot. He's trying to find Conrad Murphy. He does find Murphy but Murphy takes the ball out over the line. And he will be disappointed, I know, with that particular effort. And Ray Callan will take this line ball from his own 65. He will look at the scoreboard. Well, he probably won't, and you see it's three points apiece. An absolutely fabulous, fabulous occasion of colour here in Parky Keep. Rising is Bernie Collins, the uh, man who played with the Western Bulldogs in Australian Rules football. And he's tearing through now. Whether he met anybody like Conor Kilty out there or not, he gives it to Colin Crowley. And does he kick point number three for him and point number four for Castle Haven? Colin Crowley has kicked his top point in the match. It's four points to three in favour of the Haven. Yeah, and it's very apparent at this stage with 27 minutes gone that the Haven uh, carry more threat in attack, in more areas in attack, and Colin Crowley in particular feeding off Bernie Collins. The two of them inside, remember Stephen Connolly has also scored. Frank Callan could have done a couple of very, uh, or could have got a few very important scores earlier on. He missed the goal chance when they had no score on the board. They're very strong out there, and uh, they're certainly stronger than Tony Kilty. Two smaller men, let's put it that way, and Conrad Murphy and Patrick Griffin down the centre don't have the same um, uh, ability to break the game line, I suppose you could say. And certainly, uh, Tony Kilty looking to get scores from further out, whereas uh, they haven't a while to work their way in for them. Bernie Collins has it, a big full forward. He set up the last cork and he set up another one. He's given it to a man who's well capable of kicking them, let me tell you. He has set it up, but the kicker on this occasion, it goes off out for a wide ball, and uh, I think that's the Haven's fourth wide of the match. As we come, 27 minutes gone in the first half and wait for an indication as to how much time is to, uh, how much injury time will be played. Remember, there will be a little bit. There were two players, a player from either side down injured. We're waiting for the football to come in from the uh, sideline there and uh, the ball has now arrived into the hands of a a Eamon Hart. And Eamon Hart, the custodian, who will be kicking this one out. Thankfully, he recovered from that little injury scare he had a little earlier on in the match. It's four points to three. The uh, Cox scene of football final being kicked out by Eamon Hart to the far side of the field, rising and breaking, and who's going to catch it? All running onto it there is the young man from Castlehaven, and that's Tomas O'Leary. O'Leary's moving forward, he's a good left foot, and the referee says that he overcarried on that occasion. And Tomas O'Leary just accepts the referee's decision, as do all the guys around him. And uh, this is good respect for the referee. He has earned that respect with all his uh, officiating down through the year. The free, the man to take this is Dermot, Dermot O'Brien, the fullback. O'Brien lashes it to the side of the field here. Who's going to take it? Colin O'Donnell, but it goes through his hands and is taken by a man, Stephen Connolly, who gives it to Niall Callan. And Callan trying to find his cousin inside. And that's Paddy Hurley. Paddy Hurley has it coming and trying to make his way forward. He has forward. And uh, it goes off with how, what happens there. It can't be a goal, I would imagine because he fisted it in and uh, yes they're, dis they're uh, saying it's gone uh, they're disallowing this goal straight away and John Finton Daly 
as a member of the legal profession, but more importantly as an interpreter of the rules, I presume you think that's the right decision? Well, there's no right, no doubt party's the right decision. The question is, what was the intention of party holding that moment? That's what I'm wondering. He cut his way in. It appeared to me that he might have been actually trying to play the ball, punch it across the area party to an in-rushing Haven player. But instead of that, he went to the corner. I think that's what he actually intended. I think he knows the rules. Brack Alec well gives it to Stephen Connolly, and Connolly uh, shaves the post on that occasion. So, John, my apologies for putting in on that one. Yeah, but yeah, I, 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 well, yes, that ball was just wide too, but I think he knows the rules quite well, and I don't think he uh, was in any doubt about, uh, about, about the fact that he couldn't punch a goal. Uh, maybe he was trying to punch it over the bar. My own guess would be he was trying to play it square, and the ball ended up going inside. Either way, party, um, Castle Haven are now building up the wides and they're missing a lot of chances. Both teams with the equal number, but the Haven physically stronger party, more bite in attack, and certainly that's why they're leading at the moment by single point. Alan Crowley wins it, he gives it to Knight Callan, and another uh, massive pass up the field from Callan. Up as far as Bernie Collins, but Bernie Collins there didn't get in that occasion. The man that does is that young man up there at left corner back for Channing Kitty, who's playing very, very well indeed, and that's Colin O'Neill. Colin O'Neill gives it as far as half. Nigel Hayes, the team captain, and here's a, a probing ball up. Who's going to get it? Over there is Diddy Callan. Who gives it to his brother? Nigel Callan. There is fast somewhere around the place as well if he wanted to find him. And he's a cousin party holly. But on this occasion, it's the man O'Neill that collects it once again. Colin O'Neill. Who gives it to Tony Anglin in the middle of the park? And Anglin decides, I'm going to let this one off. Liam Collins is rising for it. And good play by Collins when the ball is going back over his head. And he comes and collects it. And he gives it to Paul Lucknan. Lucknan will give it the side defeat to Party Holly who has come away down the field for it. Holly has it. He gives it to uh, Alan Crowley and Alan Crowley is only past 65. They're peeling off him and he gives it inside to Frank Allen who gives it back as far as Dermot Holly. Holly will drive through the centre. He's already done that and he gives it to Bernie Collins and Bernie Collins will try to kick it with the right foot and he will kick it now with the right foot and will go straight and throw it over the bar for the Havens fifth point of the match. So it's now five points to three and we have 41 minutes gone and I would imagine that we're talking half-time, John. We are, Paddy, and I think that last score, you could say, came directly from a bad decision by Clannock Hilty. When they were going forward with the ball, number nine, Tony Anglin, should really have cleared it out to Colin O'Donovan. Instead, that he tried to find, find Griffin, which is uh, too one-dimensional, really, by, uh, by Clan. They're trying to find Griffin too often, but he put too much responsibility on his shoulders. He hasn't got the penetration to be able to break inside. It's now gone half-time, and certainly rightly slow at the moment. The Haven in front, a, a game in this chance so far, Paddy. Haven a two-point lead something in the balance it's looking like it's going to farm but one never knows with what happened in the second half of the semi-final when Roy Dunham and Russell were half fa hot favourites and it looked like they were going to go through that's not what happened party so you never know yes sir we have the uh, halftime uh, the story from John Finton Daly and now I know that uh, Michael Scanlon has caught up with uh, two observers who have been watching this uh, first half an intriguing match at the moment Castle Haven lead five points to three thanks to uh, party and to uh, John Finton Daly uh, so as Paddy said, an intriguing first half. Finbar, are you surprised with the way the first half has gone? Um, I, I'm not really. I, I think Castle have been that, just a bit more economical with possession. Sand started very well, but wasted several good chances. And once Castle Haven got on top, I just thought they were able to get through the clan defence easier. They could have had two goals. Fra Cahillan took the wrong option. And you could say the same about Alan Crowley. A couple of minutes later, he should have cut... TSB Senior Football Final.
Yes, Rory, welcome back here. And there's just, uh, well, uh, half a minute gone in the uh, second half. Uh, no change in the scoreline, which reached Castlehaven. Uh, five points, kind of Kilty three. And, of course, the uh, second half resuming with uh, Colin, uh, with Alan Crowley, staying at midfield. They made the switch about... Uh, well, probably 10 or 11 minutes from the half-time whistle, and it made a big difference to the Castlehaven player, brought them back into the match, and just uh, a number of uh, crucial wide balls, if you like. They would probably be more ahead of the break, but now it's kind of guilty in a free with Brittany Walsh on the 45-metre line. Is she going to leave it as far as Colin O'Donovan? We've yet to hear anything about uh, the official attendance, and we'd like to take this opportunity to say hello to uh, Mary Newman, who's at home listening to this game, and to remind uh, the Camogie fraternity that their meeting tomorrow night is in Porky Ring at 8.30. The uh, free here to be taken by Colin O'Donovan at wing forward, yet to get on the score sheet. Can that all be corrected now? Low scoring match, five points to three. The permanent TSB seen a football final, and we watch this free. It's on its uh, well, it will be on its way any moment now. It's heading the general direction, but the wide Stalia Todd is not going to get inside. It is Griffin running into Park Conrad Murphy, and uh, there's still a uh, play there, but the referee spotted a little bit of uh, rubbing of the ball on the ground and a free in. Yeah, actually, Paddy, I talked to the free in for a pick off the ground initially. The referee, I think, was unsighted and uh, for, uh, actually on a second uh, melee, we'll call it, on the way out. Uh, Haven Hand definitely touched it on the ground. This is 20 metres out, straight in front of the goal for Conrad Murphy. Must be a fairly certain score. But then when you when you see games missed it, or frees like this missed it into county level, um, Desi Dolan did it for Westmead in an infamous game, g case earlier this year. This is an important free party for you back within one. Yes, and that free brought party O'Shea to uh, Westmead. And Conrad Murphy has got his third point at free of the afternoon to put a single point between the sides. Five points to four, two minutes and uh, two and a half minutes into the second half. All the play for no doubt in the world about that. Johnny Kilty will be uh, reasonably pleased with their uh, offering so far, still very much in the match. The Whites tally is roughly around five each as we watch the kick out coming from Lee Miles, the cool baller. And uh, airport official to kick out the far side of the field and is held over there by Colin O'Donovan. O'Donovan has it still driving forward as far as the 45 metre line. What's he going to do now? Try and find Paul Griffin. He succeeded in getting this, found the ball as far as Griffin. Griffin trying to get inside. He's got inside and he moves forward. And uh, Timmy Anglin, the interception there, and away come the Castle Haven in a foul over there. Then a free out to Castle Haven. So still no side able to establish complete superiority in this particular match. Dermot Hurley has it. The big midfielder back in the right half back position. As he comes as far as the right half, comes as far as the 45 metre line, but unfortunately he's fouled over there and there's going to be a free out. And the Bear F uh, Junior football final. Garnish, one goal in 12. They only scored two points in the second half. Orton, one goal in nine. Was there a start of down there, I wonder? So Garnish on the Jonah Football Champions after three days, it took them to sort out that particular issue. And they will now kill them out, play kill them out on the County Jonah Football semi final. As we watch here, Colin Crowley kicking his uh, horse off the post. And it's kept in play by Colin O'Neill and out the field it goes and that I thought Mark Griffin has it. Mark Griffin gets it as far as Kenny Mead. Kenny Mead, the ball hop in front of him as he moves forward with Conor Kitty Black putting in plays across the front of his jersey. And he's still moving as far as the 45 metre line. Being well shepherded over there, but then he's gone inside. He's still moving in. He's on the wrong side now for a left footed free taker, a left footed player. And he gives it as far as Conrad Murphy, who has got both feet. Murphy trying to get in. Soling then, laying the ball off as far as Padre Griffin. Being well knocked over there, Griffin. What's he going to do? Put it onto his right foot. And then trying to make an angle for himself. And he still has it. Running into a little bit of trouble. Then has to throw the ball away and it'll be taken in by Paul Lucknan. He who hesitates has lost a little bit. And Colin O'Donovan is grounded into the free into Castlehaven. And Conrad Murphy comes in there to make a little bit of peace, looking for the ball back from uh, well his good friend Ray Callan and then pats him at the back of free into County Kilty, five points to four to Haven Lee. Yeah, Paddy, there was actually a passage there, a very poor football. Kenneth Mead initially went on a run down here on the right by the stand side, and he had five or six Haven players around him, completely isolated himself, got it back eventually to Paddy Griffin, who in turn did the same thing, back and forth and over and back. And you begin to wonder, was there any such thing as a true ball inside? It didn't happen. They were ultimately very lucky. When one of them are impressive forwards, Colin O'Donovan, the number 12, who, let me say, is having a very good game. He's physically strong. He won the free eventually, went down and did the donkey work to, pick, to, to go and pick that one up. It's an important free here from the stand side, with left-footed free taking here from the right at the stand party, a vital free to tie up the match. 
The free to be taken by Brittany Walsh has already slotted one over the ball for and that was a poor one inside, but maybe something could come of it. It won't be called there. The block down. There's two opportunities, three opportunities, another block down. And Ray, not Ray, but this Paul Lucknan, the Canadian, gets it out the field. And away come Castlehaven once again. Over there with Stephen Conley, very close to the sideline. Good play by Conley. He survives two attempts in his life. And uh, he's fouled the second time. He's the free taken quickly, and he gives it as far as Alan Crowley. Hook is it as far as Dermot Holly tearing down the middle. Colin Crowley's gone inside. Holly's moving forward. And uh, he can then gives it to Colin Crowley, but the pass goes astray. And Mark Griffin does a lot of mopping up there, and he gets it out temporarily as far as Brindy Walsh, who gives it back as far as Mark Griffin. And Mark Griffin gives the ball away again as far as Alan Crowley. And Alan Crowley then gives it away as far as Isaac Liam Dawn lines over there at Stone Lines, and he gives it away. This is four or five poor passes we've had from both sides. The party, Holly, gives it to Colin Crowley. Game over here if he scores it. Game in the back of the net, the goal. Party, Holly, set up Colin Crowley. And, uh, well, there'll be a lot of questions asked about that particular match. Colin Crowley, who has now scored one goal and three out of a total of one five for Haven, four points are kind of guilty. Yeah, Party, the Haven did what Clan could not do at the other end, which is find a man with the long low ball in, and there was an awful lot of it fooling around going on with the ball there. The ball was being turned over between the two teams about five or six times, right across this middle area between the 45 and the 65, and ultimately it was the Haven found a chink in the defence. Nobody was minding the house. The, one of the fundamentals of good defence in Gaelic football, no one at all was minding the house. The goalie was inside, facing Colin Crowley, one and one. You don't want to be in that situation in any sort of a match, and even at the county level, Colin Crowley will be well capable of taking his goal chance. At this level, he's absolutely clinical, a very good goal party, and we wonder after seven minutes of the second half, have we seen the most significant score of this game? We watched the ball and one back by Castlehaven to Dermot Holly, who's having a big game in the middle of the park. He gives as far as Bernie Collins, who's out the field right now, up as far as Colin Crowley, and Colin Crowley uh, laying it off as far as Frank Allen, Frank Allen, and Stephen Conley inside him, and Conley is moving forward still. He goes to goal there after a heavy tackle on lines, but he comes in and gets a kick on it, and then it all about it is from Stephen Conley. What a point from the young man. His second point of the match now to make it one six to four points. And uh, a sub on the county guilty team where John Connolly, one of last year's minors, is into the side instead of Timmy Anglin. So it's 1 6 to 4 points. And what a turnaround in this match. A goal and a point in the space of a minute. Is there another change? That is David Buttons is warming up for Castlehaven. And we'll see who's coming off. We'll wait and see. Is it Niall Callan? I wonder. I don't think it is. And it is Niall Callan has been asked to make his way to this side of the field. And Callan carried the injury and carrying the cheers, ringing in his ears, and he shakes the hand of the team manager, as you would only expect. Callan making his way off, he has done his bit for Castlehaven, not only today, but on so many days, since he started playing away back in 1981. The other sub coming on, Conor Kilty taking off. Uh, this time, I think it's Tony Anglin that's been taken off, and uh, now coming into the side is uh, Howard Kenny is coming on. Now the time the changes have been made as Ono Manny, the team manager, comes to the line to shake the hands of the players that he's replaced. Please. Oh, what a turn around the match. We got to say, head the way to Auckland in New Zealand and say hello to Patricia Cronin from Castlehaven. And uh, she's been joined by Mary and Jason Brown for the remainder of this particular commentary. She couldn't come at a more appropriate time in this particular match because from a Castlehaven perspective, they've gone into the lead and quite a considerable lead. One six to four points, and the ball is one over there, and down he goes. Party Hurley uh, goes in there and tackles the man in possession of the ball, and the referee is uh, calling in the medical attention. Party Hurley's name will go into the book. The full back is the player that's down injured, David O'Brien, and I can see the uh, doctor going in there, Liam O'Brien. He's coming in, he will check on the welfare of his son right out there and making sure that everything is okay with him. A yellow card, the second one of the match this time for uh, Party Hurley. But uh, Castlehaven right now, John Fitton Daly in the driving seat. Oh, there's no doubt about it, Party, to get the goal and then on top of that to get a, a, a point straight after it really has driven the nail in the, in the coffin for Clonic Kilty. But I know they've come back in games earlier in the championship. You mentioned UCC in particular. Also, of course, you are Donovan Russell, who are very highly rated in the semi final when it looked like they were going to take over. Clan rose a gear, the whole team rose their game to win, to win a match they seemed very unlikely to win. And certainly even more than likely now, because they're five points down, ten minutes in the second half, their full-back is just after receiving the attention. Uh, Haven received a second yellow card, but far more importantly, they're five points up party. Very hard to see any way back for Clan here. 
Howard Kenny, the man who's come in from Budapest to play in this particular match, gets his first touch on it, driving his way forward, Paulie Holly trying to take the ball off him, and uh, the ball up the field as far as Conor Murphy, who leaves it run on, but it doesn't run on because there's uh, power in this, well, Brendan Walsh comes into it, and he's been dragged down 42 or 3 metres out from goal, whether he gets up after that, we'll wait and see, he's receiving it, there another yellow card going to come out there, it could be the third yellow card, well, no, there's just a little bit of a ticking, I would imagine, and Brendan Walsh is the player that uh, down engine. So today is the day for uh, both sides, of course, to stamp their uh, supremacy, if you like, in the Senior Football Championship. Can kill the decide that in the 30s last six county finals in seven years, and then in a golden era, they won seven in 39, 42, 43, 44, 46, 7, and 52. And then they started losing them again their last five in 54, 61, 68, 83 and 85 before coming back in 96 to win and as they look up at the scoreboard now they'll wonder about this particular one as Conrad Murphy kicks it but unfortunately it has sliced off to the left and it's gone off for a wide ball and the score remains as it was so Conor Kilty uh, adding a wide to their tally but unfortunately for them not adding to the uh, scoreboard where it all matters out in the middle of the path for the Haven right now a strong midfield partnership of Alan Crowley, the man who's come back after an absence of four years. He's made a difference, no doubt in the world about that. The kick out is on his way from Lee Miles, the cold baller. It's going past the 45 metre line. They're rising, Hurley rises the highest of all, but the ball breaks down. And it breaks down, I think, as far as John Conley. Conley lays it out as far as Kenneth Bede. And Kenneth Bede hesitates a little bit. And then he is fouled and there's going to be a free end. It's uh, John Conley who has won the ball there and he laid it off as far as Kenneth Bede. A player down injured, it would appear that Kenneth Bede is uh, down injured after the, all of that. And I'm not too sure what exactly happened to him there, John Finton. Maybe you've got a better look at it. Yeah, he actually um, he got heavily challenged, nothing very illegitimate indeed. He was pushed, I suppose you could say. I wonder, is it more exhaustion probably than the individual tackle? There's been some heart hitting there. This is the point I made earlier on about the physically, what appeared to be a physically stronger Haven side. Uh, that's the second or third time we've seen uh, Clannan Kitty Fowles are going down injured. Hardly Griffin got very shaken there earlier on. Conrad Murphy, he's been hit fairly hard. But let me say that's all fairly legitimate and part and parcel of the game. And really, at the end of the day, the Haven are the evener side. They're a that bit more than penetration up front. And, uh, you know, they've brought on another fresh man now at centre half forward in David Bourne. And they certainly looked at that party. It is hard to see with 12 minutes gone. I know it's a long way to go yet. They could get a quick goal. You certainly feel that Clan have no chance of winning this game unless they can get a goal, an unlikely looking goal or somewhere, because so far party they've made very little inroads of consequence in the Haven defence. And uh, that's free uh, after all of that taken by Brendan Welch has uh, added only to the wide tally of Conor Kilty. Right now it ain't looking good for the guys from the brewery town, but who knows, there may be a little bit of uh, a comeback in them yet. We watch for the goalkeeper Lee Miles to take the kick out and uh, over there on the far side of the field party Holly got a little bit of a runabout. Remember we're going to have a man in a match you all. Well, they will be announced after this game and their function will take place tomorrow in the Celtic Ross Hotel. And, uh, well, for the winners, it's an absolutely massive day out for the losers. Well, it's a tough, tough show. Remember, remember we tried to send a few representatives along. Who are they going to be? Well, there are a few candidates as the game goes on. And we see down the middle. Is this one of them? I wonder, Alan Crowley. As he holds the ball up and Crowley still has it. He lays it off then as far as Colin Crowley. And Colin Crowley is fouled. And there's going to be a free end. And it's also academic right now at the Haven. Go to ground there. The man who will take the free, will it going to be David Burns or Paddy Hurley? I would imagine that Paddy Hurley will be the boy that will be asked to come across to take this one. His, laser, uh, his mother is, of course, one of the uh, uh, ladies down in uh, Dinty's who tells me that she's the best uh, to produce any kind of food in that neck of the woods, what they'll be producing down there later on. Will it be an occasion to celebrate as Paddy Hurley comes and uh, all getting ready to strike this one and is free taking? This is an opportunity for him to uh, add to the Havens tally as he kicks it right for it and straight and over the bar for Paddy Hurley, his opening score of the match. But a contribution, significant contribution made otherwise. And now it's six points between them. It will take two goals of Conor Kinty. Have no doubt in the world about that. The goalkeeper getting ready to take the kick out. And that's him and half the far side. A little bit of pushing in the back over there. But it's collected by Paul Lucknan who gives it to Dermot Hurley. Hurley will give it in across the midfield where he'll give it to side the field to Alan Crowley who finds Stephen Conley all in his own. And Conley is still bowling his way forward. Already with two points to his tally, can he get another one? And the answer, my friend, to the white flag in the wind and over the bar from Stephen Conley. 
his third point of the match. Surely he's a candidate. And Colin Crowley inside with a goal and three. And the tally says one goal and eight. And now it's looking all so one-sided indeed, John Finton. Yeah, well, this is what I what people would have feared could happen. And, uh, you know, right up to half time, you felt Sano hanging in there. But I did say that Haven appeared to be playing within themselves at that stage and that they would open up at some stage. Uh, it was a bit of a disaster, really, Sano, to give away the goal at the time they did. They can only blame themselves because it wasn't the first time that they were playing the ball across the middle, not clearing it. Uh, because ball watching, really, their defence gave away the goal. And what has happened since is really uh, piled more misery upon them. That's a simple score taken by Connolly. One on one situation. What Clan are not able to do, they can't shake off their main one on one at the other end of the field, they're not able to cut inside, take their score. That's what the game is about. And once again, the Haven have a free man in attack. Hardy Hurley has it looking inside. Will he kick it over the bar? Probably the wise thing he should do. And it comes off the post. Colin Crowley has it, and Crowley will now kick it over the bar for a brilliant point from Colin Crowley and Castle Haven. And that's one goal and four for Colin Crowley. It's one goal and nine for Castle Haven. It's four points to Clannic Kilty. And another sub coming on to the Clannic Kilty side. It's Kenny Bean, I think, is the player that's been uh, asked to make way for the moment. And uh, the player coming in, we'll check in a minute as to who it is. It's Conor Murray coming in. Conor Murray is into the Clannic Kilty side. And oh no, man, he's ringing the changes left, right, and center. It's a busy, busy day to be a manager of Connie Kilty. So many changes to be made. So now it's 1 9 to 4 points in favor of the Haven. A club that was founded, this particular club, they tell me, founded in 1957. But the ball being carried forward by Brendan Walsh. What's he going to do with it, I wonder? Sail it on and give it as far as uh, Mag coming up and that's Colin O'Donovan, Colin O'Donovan dropping inside and it, can it be one over there, it is one over there and away come the Castle Haven men, right shot, fast passing football and out they come the man who did the delivery with Alan Sheehy to Dermot Hurley, Dermot Hurley has David Burns here in front of him and David Burns coming inside, still driving forward and then a lovely ball off him goes Colin Crowley and Crowley will kick it with his left foot up in the air but it will come down, it won't be between the two posts and uh, the official attendance and I reckon there are a few more here and it tells us that there are 14,526 whether they counted all the youngsters that got in for nothing I'm not too sure but that's the official attendance 14,526 on this the day of uh, the Cox Cena Football Championship final where Castlehaven looked to be on their way to their third final and when you consider that in 1969 they won the West Cork Junior B final and sure on that occasion they beat Kilbert. In 1970, Frack Allen is coming off and Brendan Bubble DC is coming into the side. Frack Allen makes his way. He salutes Donald McCarthy. Uh, he salutes his manager on his way off. That's James McCarthy. And what a year it has been for James McCarthy since he took over the mantle of manager and has surrounded himself with right good operators. And uh, those good operators will include Padraig Burke. Bernie Collins, father Charles McSweeney, and the man who came all the way from Australia with Kilkenny uh, blood in his veins, that's Dan Fitzpatrick. The kicker is Paddy Hurley on this one, and this uh, an opportunity for Bernard over there to indicate that it's a wide ball and it's also academic, John Finton. Yeah, certainly this day's party, it's pretty one sided. There's 18 minutes gone in the second half, the game has gone that bit flat. It reminds me a bit of Ireland and Namibia earlier in the morning party uh, when the, after Ireland getting six or seven tries. It isn't quite as one-sided as that, but Dermot Hurley is doing what he wants now in the middle of the field. And physically party, they're driving into Clan of Kilty. And often you feel it's like men against boys. Remember, this clan team is very young. This Haven team were the 21 champions of five years ago party. They have that age advantage, they have that cutting edge, and they're certainly showing it now. And the ball is won by uh, Stephen O'Brien, or uh, Stephen Connolly, uh, not Stephen Connolly, my apologies, but it comes to Paris. Conrad Murphy with position there, he does with position as he comes forward. 19 minutes gone here, and uh, we can tell you that uh, a listener out in Toronto, John Hurley, ranked to wish Johnny Kitty well. Well, John, if you're a superman, you might get on a bike and come over because I think they need you right now. Conrad Murphy has it, Conrad Murphy kicks to the goal and goes over the bar. The bar that Lee Miles for Conrad Murphy's fourth point of the match to make it now five points to Clonny Kilty but one goal and nine to the men of Castlehaven the Oscar Trainer Cup if you're interested a Cork selection the Cork AUL have defeated the Kerry District League on a scoreline of five goals to one 
and uh, the ladies football we count out, call out a little bit earlier on they're celebrating in Dermina they have won the county G Junior B Championship when they defeated Ross Carby 2-6 to 1-8 and uh, down in the Bear Division Garnish are celebrating because they've won the Junior Football Championship down there they're winning on the scoreline of Garnish 1-12 or 1-9 Bally Gavin are South East Junior Football Champions defeating uh, Shamrocks 12 points to 7 and of course the ladies of Gabriel Ring uh, 12 points to 5 I should say that one David Bonson in and it's caught up underneath the bar by the cold baller the ladies football Gabriel Rangers are uh, Munster Junior football champions they defeated Austin Stacks 4-15 to 4-11 with a number I don't know whether there are Cannon Kilty ladies playing with them I know there are Castlehaven ladies playing in that team and driving forward now are Cannon Kilty what this match could do it without any shadow of doubt if you're a neutral or a Cannon Kilty person is a goal Conrad Murphy has it moving forward and then kicking with his right foot and into the hands of the goalkeeper over there Lee Miles who comes out a goalkeeper of course who's carrying forward a tradition laid out by the great Mike Boggy Maguire who stood between the posts for many many years I was telling you about the uh, Castlehaven they were found as I said in 69 57 69 Junior B champions 73 they won the West Cork Junior A football championship and on that occasion I think they beat Calvary Rangers they are the present Junior football champions down there and then in 76 they won their first county title when they won the county junior a title 78 two years later they followed up with an intermediate title and then in 1979 they made their first of their five appearances in the senior decider on that occasion though they lost the common baron Afe. they waited 10 more years in the meantime they acquired a few bios including Lord also tom keen and then they won it that year beating uh, the bears and uh, and uh, good uh, winning well on that occasion and then 1994 they beat Odom Rossa after a replay they were back in 97 another replay that time they were beat by Beira and today it's 2003 and they're looking good for their third the title and they're uh, driving forward I can see the man in one of the selectors and that's Bernie Collins the ball will drop off why the goalkeeper comes to take a yet another kick out we have 22 minutes gone and will be winding its way down right now on a scoreline one eye to five points and certainly a huge disappointment of course it kind of kept you put so much into this but they were absolutely delighted to get to a final after a disastrous start last year John Connolly catching the ball in the middle of the field he's one of the new youngsters for Castlehaven laying it off to uh, how can he over there who's trying to fight Potter Griffin and Potter Griffin has been found Griffin is moving forward inside he's no choice on his shot for a goal and what a goal from Padraig Griffin what an absolutely pile driver the margin is down to four it's one nine to one five yeah one wonders party 22 minutes gone is it really too late even now but it was a great goal and uh, it started party with the sub at midfield uh, for Castlehaven or sorry for Tronic Kilty who won possession and drove it forward there Griffin got it it looked at, like Castlehaven were going to cut that ball off coming across but he cut inside his man and for the very first time in this game party he managed to cut right through one and one with the keeper got the goal party and all of a sudden the game isn't quite over and it's with Howard Kenny who has it I didn't credit Conor Murray Connor Mur enough with the last goal and there's going to be a free in here right now Potter Griffin telling Howard Kenny to settle it down 1-5 to Clonic Kilty, 1 9 to Castlehaven. Did the fat lady make a little appearance and go back in again? We'll have to wait and see. As Conrad Murphy about to take this, can he make it a three point match? 23 minutes gone. We wait and see. How are they out in Bally? I wonder right now. We'll check in a minute. We watch Conrad Murphy getting ready to take this one. And uh, Murphy and there's a surprise scoreline coming in. We'll tell you about it. Is there another one? I wonder. Conrad Murphy gets his fifth point of the match four from freeze and one from play and all of a sudden it's game on my friend 1-9 to 1-6 in the minor the premier minor hurling final belly hay the raging hot favorites have been beat by newtown chandram 14 points to 1-7 what a week it has been for such a small small club they're county senior hurling champions they're county premier hurling champion and another sub coming out for Cannon Kilty. Has 17 years of age, Colum Callan comes into the side. Outside him, I mentioned a while ago, was Connor Murray. I didn't play your proper choose on that occasion for the goal, Connor. We will now do that. Rising, they do on the midfield, Hurley rising, the ball breaking in to the hand of a Cannon Kilty man. Is it their team captain? It's not. It's Colin O'Donovan. Colin O'Donovan has the ball taken away from him, but it comes as far as Brittany Welch. And Brittany Welch has a player running inside, and Brittany Welch has fouled, and there's a free end. 
Yeah, Paddy, at this stage, one big worry for the Haven is that they're committing an awful lot of fouls, and they're uh, while in possession, the clan are drawing fouls. This is a vital one. I wonder if it's slightly outside the um, range of Conrad Murphy. It's outside the semicircle. It's about 35 metres out. It is scorable, certainly. We wonder, will he have the battle to be able to take this one? If he does, it's a two-point game. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, Paddy, the fat lady has something to say about this because I thought this game was over a long time ago. Even 18 minutes in the second half. A vital free party. It gives him every opportunity to come within striking distance. Conrad Murphy about to take this one and it's sailing and had a fist in it and the referee spotted an infringement that was an opportunity they probably should have taken the scoreboard says 1-9 to 1-6 in favour of Castlehaven are they on their way to their third county senior football final or is there a Lazarus like appearance ever since we got contact with Toronto things have changed for the men of County Kilty there's a push on the back there and the push over on the team captain Nigel Hayes at this stage we'd like to say hello to a number of uh, County Kilty old warriors that are uh, recovering in hospital and what have you, all over the place. The people in question, Jackie O'Regan, Johnny O'Reilly, Teddy O'Regan, the club president, and Vic Cahalan, one of the greatest supporters Tony Gildy has ever had. They tell me that he's missed an all uh, county final in 64 years. And uh, during the war time, he cycled all the way from Ahiol to Cork. Tell me that. And uh, But no, is it going to be the day when Castlehaven Oh, there was a heavy tackle went in there. The referee didn't spot that one. And driving forward, though, it looks like the man from Budapest that has it. And that's Kenny. And whether they're taught or taught him to play football in Budapest or not, we don't know. And then a shot coming in, and the ball gone wide. And that uh, an opportunity gone a big in Colin O'Donovan. Should have maybe left it to Padraig Griffin, John Finton. My God, Paddy, that was a certain disaster situation where well, looming in the face for the Haven and O'Donovan and Griffin were going down the same channel who was wondering whether they're going to collide. And he ended up, you're saying, is he going to go for the goal or will he take his point? And what did he do? Draw it wide, Paddy. That really is a letter for the Haven. And uh, they certainly must be concerned the amount of ball they've managed to lose. They've dropped this ball in the middle of the field, touched it on the ground by Paddy Hurley, I think it is. Or sorry, by Dermot Hurley. It's a free to the... Uh, to the boys in Clannock Kilty and suddenly they're all over them now party but one wonders did they leave it too late three minutes to go the referee I wonder is he going to throw the ball in now there are three minutes between this and uh, victory for some side and they're uh, Rick Allen um, uh, fabulous singer good footballer laying the ball up the field Brendan DC is fouled over there Bubble DC is fouled and the free will be into Castlehaven and will they take their ease and take it it's already on its way in as far as Colin Crowley who's go scored a goal and four points in this match and remember one of their better known players who gives it back to Bubble DC Bubble DC into the goalkeeper's hands and the goalkeeper is aiming half half gives it outside now is the time for Clannock Kilty well it's now or never they have no, offers, no chance otherwise and can they get the ball up the field there's fouling going on there and Dini Carlan has been fouling the scene fouling there and I'm sure it's John Connolly and uh, Dini Carlan is already on one yellow does he get another and uh, the referee is telling guys to move away and uh, the uh, book is gone uh, he's uh, doing a little bit of ticking but that's all okay now the far side of the field does he not see the man over there Brendy Walsh is going down the middle and he's still moving forward County Kilty need a score and they need one badly but the man that has got it is Paul Lucknan for uh, Castlehaven and he gives it to Stephen Conley what a game this man has had three points for the uh, Castlehaven cause as they lead 1-9 to 1-6 28 minutes gone in the watch and there's an interception over there by Nigel Hayes the huge County Kilty support and now it's with Conrad Murphy to the man from Budapest and that's how Kenny Kenny drives it inside can they get it in I wonder no they can't because over there is Lucknan and Lucknan gets it out as far as that man Alan Crowley and Alan Crowley ballooned it up in the air no they'll take their chance and then they go for it Timmy O'Sullivan has it for County Kilty he gives it to the team captain Nigel Hayes Nigel Hayes gives it as far as Donal Lyons he's coming forward and he lays the ball up the field and can they get play on it inside the ball has gone out over the line there's a line ball to the men of County Kilty the team coach out there for uh, Castlehaven the team coach there are three minutes of time left I think that includes three minutes of injury time the ball is lobbed inside there's still time for either side well Castlehaven looked to have the advantage and Padre Griffin is looking for the ball inside in his chest it's 1-9 to 1-6 John is there a goal in shot? Now, well, normal time party is just kicking off. We're just coming off to uh, 30 minutes. 
We're told there's three minutes of overtime. One wonders of the Clonakilty boys going to rue the chances that they miss. Remember uh, Conrad Murphy's free that tailed off to the left. Remember the chance that came in off play right after that. There were two chances there at least. And a lot of the younger subs party and a lot of the youth here by Clon has certainly paid dividends and has uh, added an awful lot of impetus to their team in the last few minutes. But Castlehaven are coming back at them party in the, in the person of Bernie Collins. Bernie Collins has it into the semicircle and then laying it off he's still uh, carrying it forward and he kicks it inside they'll need a ball quickly and Eamon Hart has to run back and all the way and get the ball out Clown and Kilty need a football they need a goal they have three minutes to get either one of them there's a man loose here on this side of the field and uh, Castlehaven may now have uh, spotted him and he's loose no longer now the free back in their own side of the field the goal the score says 1-9 to 1-6 and there another sub coming out for Castlehaven I think there is any moment now we can see Brian Collins. What a better than a warrior this man has uh, been for Castlehaven. He's coming into the side. Who's going to make their way off? Well, we'll wait in a minute. Uh, wait a minute to see who's going to be asked to take a break for a couple of minutes now. There are now, what do we check the watch here? 31 minutes gone. And it's Bernie Collins who's coming off. Giving the man a run, I presume. Bernie Collins coming off. And the man that's coming on for him, Bernie Collins, coming to the sideline here. He's one of the selectors, remember. I don't think he made that particular decision. Now, David O'Brien is up the field, and David gave it up as far as the kind of kill him. And oh! Lines run into a heavy tackle there, but he gives it to Colin O'Donovan. They have to get the ball into the danger area. This is a bit like soccer right now. You must get it into the area where the goals can come from. Conrad Buffy has it. He's as strong as an ox, and he's fouled. And uh, how old Kinney kicks it between the posts. Does he order the wide ball? It is over the bar, and there's two between them. As Howard Kinney brought it to two points, and there is a minute and a half of time left. They tell me there are two. So now it's 1-9 to 1-7. One, one minute left for Castlehaven to hold out and add to the titles that they won in 89 and 1994. And today they remember the walk. The board tells us there's a planet left in it. Maliki O'Sullivan, who was involved in football down there, then the great Ned Cleary arrived on. Paul Ray Buck and Jim Nolan, they've all been coaches of great teams. And now it's the turn, is it, of James McCarthy to assume that mantle? Or is there another bite in the town from Canakilty? Or the team from Canakilty? But it's Castlehaven to have it over here as they hold it up. Crowley Brothers combining. Then give it to David Burns. And it's up in the air, very much up in the air. It's going to drop down for a wide ball. And now. There are 32 minutes and uh, gone, so we'll have another minute of injury time and the ball is already on its way out. Dennis Linehan is the man who decides it all. He's the whistle in his mouth, nobody else. He's with Dona Lyons coming forward now for Conor Kilty. Budapest is on the move once again and he's driving forward, Howard Kinney. The ball goes the wrong side of the intended pass and it's caught over there by Alan Sheehy, I think it is, who gets it out and it's all over. Haven are champions for the third time in their history. They won it first in 89, they won it in 94, and in 2003. On their way to this year's final, they defeated County Guilty earlier on, 116 to 19. Clyde Rovers, 7 to 11 points. Bishopstown, 210 to 111. Douglas, 13 points to 5. And today, John Fenton Daly, County Guilty, 19 to 17. Yeah, the better team did win the game, party.
adversary up. A tremendous game of football here this afternoon. A very clean sporting contest. Well done to both sides. To the referee, Dennis Lennon, and his team of officials for their excellent handling of the game. To Tommy Lynch and the ground staff here in, Cro in Park and Parky Cree for having the field in such excellent condition. Also to permanent TSB for their continuous sponsorship of our county championships. And I would like to thank them for it. And here with me are Brian Crimmon and Tomas Mulcahy from permanent TSB. I would like to sincerely congratulate Castlehaven on a tremendous victory. that you'll now go on and win a Munster club title and go on and win an All-Ireland title. So to uh, an outstanding captain, Liam Collins, he gives me great pleasure to present the Andy Scannell Cup.
Well, we said we'd win this for that man. And last of all, I'd like to thank the players. Without the players, we would not be here today. The players sacrificed everything. And now we've got our just reward. I would now ask Tomas Mulcahy from Permanent TSB to announce the man of the match. Uh, the Permanent TSB man of the match for 2003 goes to Colin Crowley.
sincerely thanks it was a good good well fought sporting game you had the age you had the experience and i sincerely hope you go on from here i mean i i know nemo have been the only team to bring him on to club back for a while and, and the carry crowd away in fee so I, I hope you put down a marker for the coming year for the cox senior football team and, and the best luck to every one of you thank you thanks. Dressing room, uh, I would say, a kind of a quiet dressing room for Cody Champion. It's a happy birthday, is it? Shall I, shall I start by saying that? <laughs> Finn Bell, obviously, uh, um, another massive occasion for Castle and Jacob. Another massive occasion for the club. The amount of work and time and effort has been put in by everyone in the club showed off there today. It's a fantastic day for Castle a personal fantastic day for myself. It's my birthday today. I asked the lads, I wanted one birthday present, and that was Andy Scanlon, and I've got him. And by God, there'll be some hell of a party in Westcock tonight. Um, I suppose, except for a little brief period towards the uh, latter, towards uh, the, you know, midway through the second half, you were always on top of that game. We were, but we felt when Niall went off with an injury, which he had going into the game, uh, we lost our way a bit. But these fellas are great heart. They showed it again. They dug in deep. And, you know, they took the game to kind of kill there in the end. And, uh, Great credit due to everyone out there, I must say. To an efficient, uh, hard-working club secondary, we say, going to be a market. Thank you. Now joined by um, uh, an outstanding corner forward, Paddy Hurley, but today Paddy, I suppose, was about um, Castlehaven team rather than about any individual. Definitely, Paddy. Um, geez, the whole 15 worked very hard there, even the subs that came on, like, towards the end there, it was back to the wall there for the last five, ten minutes, like, Tong came at us, hammering Tongs, threw everything at us, like, and fair play. The backs held up again and they're like, thanks be to God, like they're doing all year. How about the forward did a bit of work as well? They did, I suppose. We, we made a bit of hard work with two though, I suppose. Um, a different game to the, the, the game that was played way back in the, at the start of the year in the first round. Way different. Like, Clanner after coming through a very tough round there, like, Paddy, um, like they've beaten UCC. They got a draw against them last kick of the game, like, Padre Griffin a goal, like, man is deadly, like, um, they played... Y'all after that got through that again. Like they're getting through games all year there. Like they're after improving step by step. Like and you know, like the first day maybe uh, I don't know was it the way that they might have been just up for it or whatever. Like but everything fell for us that day. Like and it just we got the rub of the green that day breaks and everything. And you know it was a totally different game today. Like and they're a way tougher op opposition. Like and I'm sure you'll you'll enjoy a little celebratory drink later on. Ah uh, sure, I suppose we'll have a few drinks anyway, but we'll see you after that then. We say thanks to Paddy Holly. We're joined by uh, custodian Lee Miles. First of all, Lee, congratulations on uh, winning a county medal. Thanks a lot, buddy. It's hard going, but sure, if we don't in the end anyway. Uh, and I suppose, on your own, from your own personal point of view, you had a huge responsibility when you took over the mantle of goalkeeper from uh, an outstanding keeper that went before you. I'd like to keep up to it. I suppose you were tired at the start of the year, but um, in fairness, he came back. He'd done a great job with me. He'd done a lot of work with me, you know, but um, it was fairly good. Fair play to him. Um, no, no, a, new, a completely different match than the, the match you played him in the in the in the first round of the championship. He had to fight all the way in this one. Definitely, yeah. The conditions in the first first game there were atrocious. It shouldn't the match shouldn't have been played at all. But uh, we're expecting that a hard game. They're a great team, Clan. In fairness, you could see what uh, teams they beat there all the way up. You know, but um, I think we made life a little bit hard for us there in the uh, second half. But sure, how bad? And you know, have the uh, you can now appreciate the difference between. Uh, Winning one on the bench and winning one on the field of play. Definitely a big different side. Uh, nine years waiting to be uh, the goalkeeper, but sure, it was well worth it anyway. Sweet one. Thanks very much, Lee. Thanks,
beginning with the clear of his two. Um, on behalf of Krista Conte, I would have to say that coming on TSB uh, is the right decision by bringing this function down to West Cork today because what better place to be on a fine autumn day with the sun shining than in West Cork. I am a West Cork man myself, so I love coming down here. Um, I would like on behalf of the County Board to sincerely thank Governor and TSB. Uh, this function, uh, the day after the County Finals, is part of the scene nowadays, and um, I would like to thank them for that. And I would like to thank them most sincerely for the tremendous sponsorship that they give our County Championships at all grades in our Cork. And uh, a special thank you and a special mention to Tomas and Brian Clinton for their input and their support for our County Championships. It's it's very much appreciated and I hope to continue for many years to come because uh, as everybody knows all the money that TSB gives, the uh, permanent TSB gives the, the county board is given back out to the clubs for the promotion of the games throughout the county. So again, sincere thanks to permanent TSB for your wonderful sponsorship and I hope to continue for many years to come. Thanks again. I'm sure they had a difficult task yesterday in, in picking man of the match, but undoubtedly they came to a very good decision. And uh, the reason we're all here today is to honour that man of the match yesterday. And the permanent TSB man of the match for 2003 goes to none other than Colin Crowley. If you come forward, Colin, to receive your award. Well TSB for a, a fantastic occasion. Um, it brings me back to 1997. I can remember um, uh, we had a fantastic day and a fantastic night, and into the following morning and the following days, West in um, in Bantry, and it was great. And it's a, a word of advice for the Clan lads. It's um, being on a, a losing side in a county final back in 97. It's a hard realization, you know, that you lost the county final, but it's occasions like today uh, when you come to a, a momentous occasion like this and you stand unified and it makes you stronger and you learn from it and I've no doubt with such as someone said the average age is 21 you'll be back and you're a fantastic team um, on a personal note it's a privilege to be selected as man of the match but I'd like to accept it on behalf of all my teammates and I'd just like everyone to give a round of applause to the Castlehaven panel the subs the trainers for what they've put in to us and the dedication that they have put in all year. It's absolutely fantastic and I'd like to give them a round of applause. I think uh, I touched on it yesterday. Um, I'd love to give something back to the effort and to the dedication that James McCarthy has put in and the selectors, Bernie Collins, Father Sweeney, uh, James Mack, um, Podrick Burke, um, and if this can go in some way to showing how I feel about and, and expressing my thanks to you and each and every one of you, then this is for you. Um, Tomas, thanks very much. Permanent TSB, thank you very much. Superintendent Galway, thank you. Jim Forbes, and everybody that's that's here today um i'm in awe of this of this whole thing uh, it's not easy to stand up here you know and i'd just like to thank everybody okay Join uh, Michael Clifford of the uh, Evening Echo, who is chatting with Bernie Collins from Castlehaven. Uh, Bernie, uh, what does that feel like after winning the county title? It is the greatest dream I've ever had, I suppose. Growing up as a young friend, going watching Castlehaven play football, seeing Niall Collin, Larry Tamkins, Mike Moore, and John Cleary. It's what I've ever dreamed of. The greatest thing that ever happened to me, I suppose, just sinks in today what, what it's all about, why we do it, I suppose. We went down to Castle Townsend last night in Union Hall and there's a big crowds out. It's what it's all about. It's why we, we get out in January and train like madmen. It's what it's all about. 
today makes it all worthwhile. Well, we're going to celebrate today, yesterday, today, and maybe tomorrow, but on Niall Collan, a lot of people say he's finished. He might, he might end up his playing career after coming back, but that man loves playing this game, and he's not finished yet. He's going to keep on with this team, and I'll tell you one thing, we're going to give this Munster club a great rattle. We're not, we're, we're not playing football, as Patrick Burke said. This is a stepping stone, and he said every game he's been involved this year, this is just a stepping stone. Yesterday was a stepping stone. We are moving on to bigger things, and hopefully we, got, we can move on to bigger things this year. Cheers, man. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. I'm now joined by uh, one of Castlehaven's outstanding midfielders yesterday, Dermot Hurley. First of all, Dermot, congratulations Thank on winning that county medal. Thanks a million, Paddy. It was great to win it. Fabulous to win it. Uh, we won the under back in 98. This is 0-3. It took us five years to uh, make it to the senior. Um, I suppose by 0-1 and 0-2, a lot of people had written us off saying that the young guys had gone. They couldn't uh, do it, but uh, we stuck at it. As I said, it took five years, and uh, five years worth waiting for. Fabulous day. Um, it was, uh, I suppose... A match like everything else of different parts, kind of guilty started well. You finished the half strongly, a brilliant start to the second half, and then a little dodgy period. Yeah, a little dodgy period. I mean, it, it was a low scoring game if you look at it, the first half. I mean, after 20 minutes, there was two points all. And then just before half time, we picked up another few points. We went in 5 3 at half time. Uh, came out then after the break, and geez, uh, after 10 minutes, we were really, really ripping, you know. Um, we went up eight points, as you say. Um, but I felt if, if, if they got a goal, you know, it was going to spell danger for us. They got the goal and they got a few points, brought it back to three points. And it did look serious. It looked very serious. But uh, I, I honestly felt we, we had that bit more than them. I never felt we looked like losing the game. I know a lot of people were fretting on the sideline and stands, but um, I just felt we, we were going to hold out. I didn't feel we were going to let this behind us. There's no, no way we were going to let that behind us, you know. Even loss of Nile was a huge loss, but we were going to stick in, in for it, you know. Um, obviously, you must put an awful lot of work into your own personal fitness because you do play uh, a very energy-sapping sort of uh, uh, a match in terms of the amount of position you win, carrying the ball, laying it off, covering back. It, it is. Uh, in fair, I, I, do, I do a good bit of running now, all right, uh, in the games, but uh, that's just the way my game goes, you know. I, it just That's it's kind of the past few years now, that's the way it's happened for me, that going back, getting ball and trying to bring out the defence and working with Niall, and Niall lets, lets the ball along. That's that's our game pattern. You could have seen in the semi-final against Douglas. Douglas knew that straight away. Whenever I went back and got the ball, there's two men on me straight away. Um, they obviously had studied us, you know. Um, yesterday, they, now against Clan, um, probably had a bit more space than against Douglas. You know, they was able to get the ball in the back, come out to the half-back line midfield, pop it to Niall or... Bernie was warming or Colin was warming, just led into the forwards. Uh, it depends on the day, but uh, as you said, yeah, I, I do a good bit of drifting and I do drift back a bit more than I'd say drifting forward. Um, I wouldn't be one of the fellas going forward anyway, going for, going for the pot, you know, but that's just the way it goes and we are uh, so far so good. Yeah, but thank you very much well, indeed. Well. I'm now joined by a number of gentlemen that have been associated with this club, I suppose. Well, I was, go I was going to say since it began, but probably nearly since it began. I have Christy Collins here, Ned Cleary, and Jim Nolan. Christy, if I could turn to you first, as uh, I suppose, first and foremost, as a, as a supporter and a father of two players, yes, there was another uh, great day in the, in the history of Castle Game. Oh, brilliant day for Castle Game, yeah. Um, our third county, uh, our fifth appearance there, and uh, I'm absolutely thrilled for the, for, the, for the club, everyone involved in it, and the. the you know, all the workers in our club, there. I think we have a fantastic club. Christy, do you know, one thing that dawned on me yesterday when we were uh, inside Park Kiev, is there anybody down in Union Hall and Castle Townsend that's not involved in that club? Well, I, I suppose in um, coming big day like yesterday, everyone is some way involved. Um, nearly everybody has an input into it. And... and um, uh, I think that, that um, in our club, at times, personalities are very important. Somebody said to me that uh, when Paddy Hurley became chairman, geez, he knows nothing about football, you know. But I think Paddy Hurley has been a fantastic chairman for Castle because everyone likes Paddy, and I think the whole club is very united because he is the chairman of the club. Ned, uh some people describe you as the father figure of uh, Castlehaven. You came from uh, Mayo a number of years ago and got involved um, 
right at the very, very start. And uh, there have been many great days, but obviously yesterday was another special one. Oh, very special indeed. And it was one of those games that I enjoyed most of all because yes. I had no direct involvement. I was years on the sideline, sweating bricks, running up and down and trying to motivate players and wondering would they, how would they go and how... And as we were saying before we came in, that's that's very demanding and very draining. But yesterday, I had nobody belong to me playing, even though we were after coming from Glint Flesk, where I had uh, a few anxious moments. But uh, that aside, I came back and um, was lucky enough to be with some of the hierarchy of the GA inside in the enclosure, and I never enjoyed a uh, county final as much. I suppose, though, it, it must be a, a great sense of achievement for yourself as somebody who was so involved uh, earlier on that there are no other people that are willing to carry the baton, if you like. Correct. That's, 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 that's a legacy that I think anyone would like to leave. When we started off now, eh, and when, well, starting to, everyone knows the story about Junior B and Junior 1 and winning in 69, 73 and 76 and reaching a county senior final in 79. Everyone knows the story of that, but most people then after that 79 said, well, like all small clubs, including Newcastle Town, they'll, they'll last up there a couple of years and they'll fade away again and they'll be down junior and we'll be having a crack at them. But uh, that didn't happen and that's the marvellous the achievement for uh, Parish the size of Castlehaven. It was unbelievable. I, I personally didn't think that we could remain a senior team for 20 years, like I thought this wasn't on. And now, looking at our under 12s and our under 14s and our under 16s, it looks as if there's another three decades of football there to be won. And I have no doubt that we'll be appearing, you know, um, I don't think it'd be good to be appearing every year, to be winning one every year, because uh, you, you couldn't get a kick out of something you're winning on a regular basis. I remember Billy Morgan, I was selected with Cabri one time in the... We were playing Nemo, we played in Ballancolic because um, I think it was 74, the Parky Key was being renovated. And we sweated bricks preparing and fierce cabri following and everything. Nemo, Billy Morgan was captain the same time and he, cup was won. He walked out the gate and about a dozen walking, youngsters walking after him and hauling the cup home. And I just thought to myself, well, if cabri had that cup, every man would be shoulder high and to be but they were winning them too often, like, and I think that it's not, I wouldn't like to win it every year. Jim Nolan, Jim, you've, um, obviously your association with this club is absolutely legendary, and I suppose um, one question I'd like, to, one question that I'd like to ask you would be, um, you know, the sort of people keep going back to Castlehaven, that once you're born down there, you stay with it regardless of where you find yourself on this planet. Well, you probably know more than him, Paddy. Um, I'm in a shan now, and I still keep coming back to Castlehaven. But I, I, I'm in a unique position here, actually. I'm with two people that I'd say probably mould in my career uh, down through the years. I think Ned started me playing in, I think, 73. Uh, I was a sub. Christy still thinks I was a mascot, but uh, after that. But I think that uh, Ned, 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 Ned actually uh, t trained me, brought me into the team. Ned actually got me coaching team, I think about 75 co co young lads, Nell Callahan, and John Carey and those. But I think on Christie's side, I played with Christie from 74 on. And I think there was five five brothers probably yesterday, there were six brothers probably playing with me in the team. And I was like another brother. Definitely, I would not have survived any other team without those guys looking after me. And it, it passed on afterwards, I, I, I trained the team. Christie was with me at the time, Mike McGuire was with me. After Ned took us probably to, to the 80s, I, I, I played in the, in the 80s. Paddy Brock came in there, trained and raised teams, the same thing. Uh, played a very big part, bought us our first county. Then uh, myself and Christy teamed up and we won another county in 94 and we were beaten in 97. And, uh, uh, you know, James McCarthy was involved with underage teams coming up along and now he's, he's got, he, he was involved on the 12, 14. When he came on the scene this year, people said James McCarthy, but he was actually very involved in the 89 team, he was a sub, the 94 team, he was a sub. He trained that team in, in 99 when they won the 21 and he was a, a great choice. He's done fabulous work. But it, it, it works that way. Like and, and like the two guys here, I said, they definitely formed my career here. But I hope that I helped to, to mould other players' careers as they come along. And that's the way Castlehaven works. And, and there's no one, I'd say, that, oh, I, as I said earlier in the week, um, Castlehaven won a count in the 12th this year inside in Skibreen. I came down to see that final. And um, I was more delighted than anyone to, that they won that match. And that's the way it's with everyone. I'd say, we're all the same in Castlehaven. Christy, um, obviously every victory is important, but uh, this one is going to stand the uh, club in uh, good state for the future now, if you like. There's no doubt about it. 
what, what I thought, what I thought about this team, uh, I really believe that we had another team coming, but to have they be here and achieve that? Yes, I think they're here now, and I think they will get better. I, I honestly believe that I think they will get better. And going back, going back to um, what Ned said there about uh, about um, uh, that '74 county final. I happen to be captain of that Carberry team. <laughs> I happen to be captain of that Carberry team. And, 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 uh, and you would have appreciated that cup that day. I would, but I tell you one thing, I was, I was played in 73, and I played in uh, 73 and 74 with Carberry, we were beaten in the final. I was captain in 74. In 79, I played with Kev Damon in the county, but we were beaten. And yesterday, my son, Lifted that cup, and I was I was proud. I, I t t it's another thing that I was proud. One other thing to pick up on what Jim said there about Castlehaven. I was approached a numerous times to, to to train and coach other teams, but I don't. I and the people that just come to me, I say to them, get somebody in your own club. That has been Castlehaven down to the. We have had people in our club. Ned started it off. Uh, with Buck Fallon. I was there a few times. Jim, Jim, they have done a fantastic job. And now James McCarthy. And they were people who started at the very bottom of Castleham and they have gone, they have gone, they, they have been there and they have gone through and they know what it's like. And they know the score. And that's, that is one of the secrets why we are successful. It has been a company to be, or it has been a pleasure, I should say, to be in the company of this great gentleman. I'm now joined by uh, two players who had a huge role to play in yesterday's victory. That's uh, defender Paul Nan and uh, wiry wing forward Stephen Connolly. First of all, Paul, um, not all of us will know how you ended up playing with Castlehaven. And uh, I must say that Castlehaven have an amazing ability to attract st star players, may I say. So maybe you tell us how you ended up wearing that famed uh, blue and white jersey. Um, I guess it all, it was start basically I would have to say my parents who uh, you know like the whole time that I was living in Canada they were always involved in the in the Gaelic uh, either hurling or football my mother played camogie and uh, I was playing football over there for a club St. Michael's uh, playing underage started playing senior and uh, a fella came over from Cork Dinny Callan he started he was actually our opposition uh, he played for St. Vincent's over there but uh, we got on like a house on fire, you know, he had great time for us and uh, ran into him one time up in Dublin, up at the, the Seven Aside tournament up there and I just said casually that I was going to try and play football in Ireland that, uh, you know, as much to say that I would look him up, you know, if I was over, but the, the guys were there and he says, great stuff, you'll play with us and uh, Stephen was there at the time, I'm sure, and there was, the whole team was there, lads. He's coming to play with us, and uh, I, I just I started meeting the lads, and I kind of got on with them very good. Had a, got a good vibe off them, and I, I thought, why not? I come play with these guys. You know, it was I got a good feeling off them. I said this is as good as going anywhere else, and uh, came down, uh, started playing with them, and from the word go, I had an unbelievable reception, and uh, I was given every opportunity, every chance, and. Uh, you know, things went well, and it's turned out to be unbelievable. You know, it is an absolutely fantastic experience to come. And I mean, it's, it is definitely beyond your wildest dreams that you might win a win anything. But uh, to come and win a, a car championship is outstanding. And I believe that your father, or somebody, was telling me yesterday down the tunnel before the game that uh, he was off for the match. That's right. Yeah, my mother, my mother came over for the semi-final. Uh, I'd say she was more interested in actually seeing Tyrone winning and she's a throwing woman she's a throwing woman yeah, yeah and uh, she was over she was going to make sure that she got the Cork semi-final and the throwing winning the All-Ireland all in one and uh, my dad he was on to me from the word go that uh, when I came over he was saying when when might they play that kind of a final or whatever you know yeah. trying to feel me out and he's like oh sure around September or October and he said oh, well, if you make it oh he might be over might be over but yeah, that he said he, he said now he would not miss it for the world, you know, and uh, he came over and uh, oh, he's absolutely over the moon. He's delighted, you know. I'm glad I'm I'm delighted that he did come and get the share in it. All right. 
No, I'm now joined by Stephen Connolly. If uh, I must uh, explain to our viewers that when we were setting up the little, the few chairs here, uh, Paul reckoned that Stephen should put a yellow page under him to kind of give him, <laughs> give him a bit of height. But uh, he didn't need any yellow pages yesterday, Stephen. Uh, first of all, congratulations, both on Castlehaven's victory, but on a, ga a great personal performance. Yeah, it was one of the greatest days I, I ever had with Castlehaven, to be honest. Like, and, you know, we lo you lose some games like we lost in 97 or whatever, and but yesterday was just unbelievable, like, you know. This is what we trained all year for, so we're just delighted, to be honest. Uh, Stephen, you're one of the players, uh, not like this fellow who was bought in uh, at, a, at an amazing cost uh, <laughs> to the Gastlehaven club that has come up through the ranks, and it must be, uh, you know, uh, particularly special to win with guys that you probably grew up with and went to school with. Yeah, sure. I, I know everyone, like, sure, we all grew up together, and, you know, sure, we're just, everyone's just best friends, sure. Paul, when he came straight in, like, sure, it's like, I, I, I don't remember Paul doing it all. I thought he was always playing with us, like, but he's uh, just a great friend of ours. Everyone's great old friends, so it's a great setup, to be honest, like, you know. Um, I'm not going to ask you about the uh, banner that was across the pitch yesterday, Angels from uh, Heaven. I presume you had absolutely nothing to do with that, or you weren't part of that particular night out. I wouldn't have much time for that kind of carry on, you know, to be honest, like, I wouldn't agree with it, like. Uh, that rumour is going around the place, then. There's a bit of a rumour, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're passionate about that, right? Like, <laughs> you'll have a bit of that, like, you know, and uh, the whole set up. Uh, I'm now joined by uh, John Cleary and uh, Mike Maguire. First of all, John, um, it has to be said that it was a, you know, a special day yesterday winning your third title. Castle Haven winning their third title. I would have doubt, yeah. Um, you know, we. we put an awful lot into our football and it means an awful lot to the people of Castlehaven and uh, you know particularly this year like I suppose we weren't expected to, uh, to do any great things and to win a county this year has been you know, absolutely fantastic. Mike you decided that uh, earlier on there you were going to take a little sabbatical you were able to come back and give a little bit of advice but whether you're a player or a supporter or a manager uh, from the way I look at it from Castlehaven it doesn't really matter once you're one of them. Exactly it was a great occasion for everybody from Castlehaven like as John said, yeah, like at the start of the year, things didn't look too good, but the lads put a few effort in, and everyone was behind him in the parish. Whereas I know that mentioning Nemo Ranger and Castle Haven in the World War of Times, you might go down that well, but uh, there is something now about Castle Haven about the continuity of managers being selected from within, and you have James there yesterday coming through the ranks, and uh, so many of the former players helping out there. Um, I mean, I, I've spoken about this on several occasions in relation to Nemo Rangers, but yesterday it crossed my mind that it can be applied to Castlehaven as well, Mike. Well, in fairness to James, at the start of the year, he said um, he'd take the job and, and he took it on, and they made a great job of himself and Father, Father Sweeney and um, Bernie and Dan Fitzpatrick and um, Patrick Burke came in there as well, like, so they put it, they put it, and, and they put a fierce effort into him in the organisation. So, and James was used to those players back along over the years, so. He had, he had good knowledge of him, like, because he trained him at underage, like, as well, and, and he trained him to win the three on county, so he knew those players and knew the background and the history of him as well, like, so I had not feared that James would be do a good job with him, like. Um, John, one thing that struck a lot of people yesterday was the colour of the Castle Haven, and, and in some senses somebody could say that it was a big risk to take, that you had the whole parish involved, that they were all wearing... Uh, like, I mean, it was, near, it was nearly the first professional merchandising uh, system that we had in operation. Yeah, um, you know, th there was a lot of uh, the way things are gone now, even with looking at the All Irelands this year, even with Cork now, it's a completely different ball game to it was seven or eight years ago. And I said the flags, the colours, and I suppose the one thing that I'd say the management were worried was was what effect would it have had on the players, you know what I mean? And uh, I'd say. I'd say it maybe did affect both teams in, in that uh, the first 15 minutes fellas looked very nervous and they didn't seem to get in, it took them a while to get into the game and there was a huge build up to the game actually and um, I'd say it definitely did affect the players but fair play to the lads that, that got involved in the merchandise because you know they're, they're promoting the sport like you know what I mean and, and that you know you, you see it now in rugby and soccer and I think you know what they're doing for, for G is absolute, absolute, absolutely tremendous and I know say when we won the county in 94 there was young fellas 11 12 that were actually playing yesterday and you know I'd say it kind of stuck in their mind that one day they wanted to go there and hopefully you know the 11 12 year olds now that they, they'll come in six or seven years as well to both of you gentlemen thanks very much we're now joined by um I suppose three wise men, if you like, James McCarthy, Dan Fitzpatrick and Padraig Burke uh, of the backroom staff that were involved yesterday. If I could call to you, James, uh, well, my first thing, of course, I should do is congratulate you on a great day. Thanks. Um, 
this is a dream come true for, for us. Um, everyone down Castle have dreams of these days, and this is one of them. Uh, James, I, uh, sometimes when you hear speeches in rooms like this, you don't know whether this is true or not, uh, that at the start of the year there wasn't a huge queue lining up to take this job, but you offered. I don't know about offering, but i um, kind of per persuaded, and a few of the players asked me to get involved, and I said I would. And you don't regret it now, obviously? Well, not today, no. Guaranteed. <laughs> Dan, um, my first time coming across you was at, a, the, at a, an underage or a, your club dinner at the start of the year and you were introduced to the locals. Um, I remember Paddy, your club chairman at the time, referred to you as Morris Fitzgerald, but uh, you, might, you, might just, you might just explain to our viewers about your background and how you got involved with this great club. Yeah, I've um, been living in Ireland for the last six or seven years and uh, I was the uh, Irish manager, coach manager of the Australian rules side, that uh, full Australian rules that uh, went out to Australia for the World Cup. And we won it there in Australia last year in Melbourne and uh, Bernie played with my brother in Australia and Bernie got in contact with me and said that he has a little bit of a job to, to be done down this way and I said I'd come down and I came down and I met Mac and uh, I had met Patrick at that stage and the players and I just knew from, from day one that it was, you know, it, there, was a, it, there was a great scene there and I just wanted to be involved. Patrick Burke, uh, obviously in the MS bus, synonymous with success in Castlehaven. Uh, you had done it all before. Uh, what tempted you? Because obviously it was a big decision to make to come back and help out earlier on in the year. Well, there was a little bit of pressure applied. <laughs> uh, I, I, no, 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 not. Uh, uh, there was no blown envelope or anything like that. But, uh, uh, you know, it is great to be involved again. There's a great buzz. Um, I was out of it for, I suppose, 10, 11 years. And uh, I was very slow getting back in, to be honest with you, but um, I was delighted to be uh, with James and Dan and the whole squad of lads. And I have said it to the players themselves, um, there is, I, I've been involved with squads in Castlehaven, going right back between playing and managing and that. And these fellas are as good a bunch of fellas I've ever come across. And dedication, in modern days, um, people, seem to think that um, you can't get dedicated GA players without this paying and all this sort of stuff and these players are as good as better I would say than I have ever seen in Castlehaven and that's saying something it certainly is saying something um, Patrick I mean you've been down there all your life it's more than just simply a sport isn't it uh, this whole parish community involvement and I know there's a lot of old cliches thrown around but it's so important to all of them, all of them down there. Just terribly important. I mean, um, going back when we were playing junior and up to intermediate and on to senior, there was a tremendous excitement in the whole parish. And then you had players coming along, the likes of John Cleary, Niall Callan, Michael Burns, uh, Michael Maguire, who, from then on, everyone looked up to those players. And it was very easy to get players. And they also learned training techniques, they learn football techniques, they, they learn their trade from those good players more than from anything else, I would think. Dan, when you look down at, uh, from, the, from the stand yesterday, after, receiving, after your team received the cup, surely that when you decided to agree to Bernie's request that you never thought you could see such an atmosphere and such an occasion? Well, yes and no. I believe, like when I went down, I saw the players and I saw the commitment from, I, I talked to the backroom staff before I talked to the players. And I'm um, oh, sorry about this. Don't worry about it, and uh, I, um, I always believe if you're going to go into something, you go into something, for, you know, for success. And uh, maybe, maybe not this success, but I thought we w that we would do something this year. But this is unbelievable. James, you came up through the uh, underage ranks. You were part of the panels that won uh, the two county finals, and uh, you had been involved with these teams, uh, with some of these lads from under 14 and all the way to under 21 a couple of years ago. Was it a big step up then when you had to assume the mantle of manager of the senior team? Oh, definitely um, a big step up for me. Uh, but saying that, um, going back to uh, the backroom staff of uh, Darren here beside me, uh, who done all the fitness work at the start of the year. I'd, all I had to do at the start of the year was just turn up, make sure they were there. And uh, Father Sweeney and Bernie Dean had the players with him, so which was very important. But uh, we won the first round of the championship, 
And uh, I said to the boys, I said, I still wanted one man involved. And I said, if we get that man, we are going to go places. And that man was Patrick Burke. Um, it struck me that um, in Castlehaven, that um, there's no such thing as being an egotistical character. That um, you do what you can do yourself. And if you want to require, if you require another bit of advice or another bit of help, you had no problem with that role. No. Um, to share, if I'm not going to say it here, but I, the fellas behind me, that are not, I'm not going to say their names here, but uh, what support they gave me, and any time I asked them, uh, they gave super support to me. Uh, players from the past, uh, still around the place, they're just walking around the place, there's some of them, and uh, they were always there for me. Padraig, uh, finally to you, um, this victory obviously is going to ensure that the Haven is reasonably safe for a while. Well. I remember back in 79 when we lost the county final. <laughs> um, we lost the following years and we, weren't, we, we didn't seem to be getting places. And people said at the time they were like other local teams around and they would go back down the ranks. We then won in 89 and a few years after that they were saying they'll go back down. After 97 they were saying they'll go back down. And I think this... 2003 will ensure senior football at a top level for the next decade, 15 years. To the three of you gentlemen, I say thank you very much. I'm now joined by uh, the Crowley brothers, uh, Colin and Alan. And uh, first of all, to you, Colin, yeah, to congratulate you on your uh, Man of the Match award for a start. Thanks very much, Paddy. Geez, you know, it's, a, it's a privilege to be chosen. You know, I'm lucky enough to be chosen as the TSB men of the match you know it's a great honour um, and as I said in the speech inside there in front of the boys it's, I don't want to be selfish and claim it for myself it's on behalf of all the lads and, and, and the teammates and you know and this man here it's great you know being able to play with him again after such an absence on his behalf you know but uh, it's a great team experience you know I, I, I remember talking to um, Colin during the summer time and uh, uh, I think Cork, Cork were out of the campaign then and uh, it was very obvious, even in the kind of casual conversation that, that we had, that uh, Castlehaven wanted to do business this particular year. Oh, we did. We knuckled down at the very start of the year. You know, um, Darren Fitzpatrick Fitzy came in there, you know, and he put us through our paces physically. Uh, James Mack is a, a fantastic trainer. I have the utmost respect for that man. I think he's fantastic, you know, and uh, the two of them worked well together. There was a chemistry, and, you know, um, the boys in the panel then, we got a sense of that. And, put the shoulder to the wheel from the very start you know we trained hard we trained seriously it's an amateur game but I think your approach has to be professional in this day and age and we just knuckled down and did the business and, and today was a reap of the rewards you know um, just fantastic just some payback you know Alan um, I was going to shake hands with you because I haven't, I haven't seen you at home for quite for, for, for quite a while but um, talk us through how you ended up playing in a county final yesterday well I suppose uh, Probably, probably as much as a surprise to you as probably a surprise to me as well. Like you know, I mean, I mean, I was. The, I suppose I've only started playing football about two months ago. Really, I mean, the last four years through a serious injury, you know, I couldn't play at all. But um, I came back playing about two months ago, and you know, I suppose you know, growing up in the so-called Castlehaven youth system, when you're playing football all your life, the fact that you're away from a couple of years, you miss it so much. And um, I know I had to get back there, and you know, uh, I suppose medical evidence said that I wouldn't play, but I know myself that if I could somehow get back to Castlehaven do the training, get through it, that I might be able to play again. Came back two months ago, um, got a few challenge games in, you know, the team brought me back in, I was delighted with that, and fair play to them to do that. And got the training in, got the fitness back, got the ball work back, there's still a little bit to go there, as you could, you know, you could see by that yesterday. But um, I was delighted to be starting this weekend. I, you know, I didn't really expect it, but last weekend I was told that I would be starting centre forward, or else in the midfield area. And it was, you know, it was a privilege to be back, especially, I mean, the last time I played was back in 97, I've been absent for about four or five years, through the serious injury. Um, and back in 97, I was, at a, I was definitely at a, a fairly high grade there between fitness and football-wise. And I didn't think that I would be able to get back to that. But through the last few games, the last few months, um, certainly I knew, you know, I knew myself that the fitness was coming back and the football was coming back as well. And to start the last day was, I think you can see there with the team that Castlehaven have out there and the subs that they have, for me to even play back again was a privilege to get back on the team. And, you know, I can, I can really, you know, say no more than that. The, thanks to the selectors, you know, for, for giving me the confidence to, you know, to come back on the team. It's fantastic, you know. Colin, I know you're one of the crew now that have to 
your domicile in Cork City and you have to travel down to the to the haven, but it seems to be part of the part of the package. Oh, it's part and parcel of the of the part and parcel of the whole thing party, you know, like uh, there's a lot of us up in the city, I don't know exactly how many. I, I think they, they could be uh, 12 or 13 or 14. Uh, we travel down, it's 120 miles round trip. We do it four times a week. You know, you just take it for granted. You just do what you like coming home. You meet the lads, you know. Um, Castlehaven is a small rural parish. It's very family orientated and it's just a joy to get back there. You know, it's just like, look at how many people turned up here today in the Celtic Ross. Not in my wildest dreams that I think so many people would turn up. Um, our support yesterday, absolutely fantastic. and. We do it for those people, we do it for the people of the parish, the men, women and the children especially of the parish, they're the youth, they're what's going to come up in the future, they are the future, you know, and it's just all for them, you know. Um, if I was to go back through the season, you played four matches, Colin, and um, to look back at it now and, uh, you know, so that we can reflect a little bit, there obviously were some scary moments, maybe the first half against Bishopstone and maybe the Clyde Rovers game now when we when, when, when we'll have a peeper, that was probably a close enough call. Oh yes, definitely. The Clyde Rovers game uh, definitely stands out in our minds. It's um, they were absolutely tremendous. Those boys were going places. I firmly believe it. Them boys meant business. They're a fantastic team. They really, really, really did put us up against the wall. You know, um, we had to dig deep. You know, we had a lot of young fellas in the team, and and, and they came up trumps. You know, and and we just plugged away and plugged away. That was the second round. We lost in the second round for the last three years in a row. We said that was our target point at the start of the year we had to get past that and once we got past in the rest just came in regards to the Bishopstown game we um, underperformed in the first half Bishopstown are a fantastic team you know I think the standard of, of football into our uh, senior football in, in the county at the moment is very very high you can pick six or seven teams that can win the county final you know as well as Nemo um, and when we went in at half time everything was cool everything was calm we kept the heads we came out we got the breaks in the second half. We just went for it. Made things happen, and, and they happened, and we won that. You know, it, I think that was that was the one that really set us on the way, buddy. Uh, it would be remiss of me if I didn't talk about the goal. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where the space came from, Polly. My God, I, 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 I was in an you ocean of space. I, I think I had a bit too much time. I was actually, uh, I was contemplating chipping him at one stage, and I said no. <laughs> the head, uh, the head ruled it. So I just put the head down. I don't know how many steps I took to this. I just have to wait until I watch it in video. You know, uh, took a couple of steps and, and, and bang. And luckily enough for me, she she sailed in and. Lucky enough, ended up in the top corner, which is all right. I, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, Alan, I know that some people will be, um, so that I want to sound informative uh, about your uh, present state of health and what you hope to achieve from here on in. Well, you know, Paddy, I mean, yesterday, uh, certainly the, yesterday morning, the state of health was very good. I wouldn't say it's that good now today, but certainly over the next week or so, um, you know, I'm getting back into the training. I'm in college at the moment in Galway, so there's a lot of games there as well with the college. Um, you know, and as I said to you know to, to the reporters yesterday, and as you probably read in the papers, that the only way I can get over this injury is to keep training. So that I suppose is a plus in a way, the fact that you have to keep, you know, keep training, keep getting fit. My you know present state of fitness is very good, but I mean, to come back into, um, I mean, I played 20 minutes against Douglas. That was great, but I knew that I knew that day that I wasn't, you know, I wasn't at the standard that you know I should be for senior football. Um, the last day in Parky Cueve, it was, you know, I felt very good, and I certainly felt very good in the pitch. And it was, you know, I was in a way testing myself. The fact that I could keep going for 70 minutes was, you know, I thought it was a bit of a credit to myself that I could keep going. Um, so I think from here on in, I suppose I'll always be kind of aiming to, you know, compete myself now to what I was about four or five years ago. Maybe getting that bit older as well, but I reckon I'm still on the younger side of, you know, still on the younger side of 25 or 26 anyway. So um, <laughs> he was, um, uh, I remember a very good speech here on the air as the, uh, Nigel Lamb was coming down the bus yesterday and he actually said, um, he said that, you know, Patrick Burke is doing a great job, he said, and there's such a good team out there, he said, um, that Patrick Burke said to me in the start of the year that Callan, he said, I have no problem taking you off. And he said, you're after taking me off twice already, you fecker, so, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't know if Nigel Lamb too happy with that now, but, you know, it's, um, I mean, yesterday, it, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the managerial decision, like, you know, I mean, to, to see him going off yesterday, um, you know, it, it was a bit sad, but I mean, I suppose he had the injury. No, without a doubt, if he was in full fitness, he would have lasted the game. Without a doubt, like you know. But to see him going off is certainly a blow to any Castlehaven team. You know, down through the last 20 years, to any team that came out of Castlehaven. But the fact that 
I mean, we're trying to prove now that we have the players that can step in there and take over the role. I mean, likes of myself, Colin, Liam Collins, Bernie Collins, and a lot more players there that can take over the role of fitting into the likes of Nigel and shoes like you know, and taking on the team and pushing them forward. And in such an occasion as it was the last day, it was a very big occasion. And it was great to win it, like you know. To both of you, gentlemen, I say thank you very much. I'm now joined by one of the younger crew on the Castlehaven team, Tomás O'Leary, and I'm uh, reliably informed that his father, Jack O'Leary, was a cornerback on the Castlehaven team of the century. He was indeed, yeah, he was. Um, he was at the game and uh, he's been a Castlehaven man for about 20, you know, 20 years and uh, he was a good player, like, and uh, he was happy for me to join uh, Castlehaven, you know. And uh, somebody said it took a small bit, a little bit of persuasion Tomás, if you don't mind me saying so. Uh, <laughs> a, a small, a small little bit, like, um, or like, I always followed Castlehaven, you know, the father took me to games and stuff, but uh, I suppose, you know, I got a small bit of helping hand, you know, in a way. <laughs> uh, coming to the game itself, obviously it was a big, big occasion, no matter, uh, you know, like a young fella going to a county final, 15,000 people there in a sea of both County Kilty colour and uh, Castlehaven colour. It must have been a daunting enough occasion when you ran out onto the pitch. It definitely was. It was a new experience for me, definitely. Um, it was uh, all the colour and everything. Like It was amazing, really, you know, and uh, an experience I'll remember for the rest of my life, really, yeah. And I suppose if we were to look at the game, Tomás, there was, uh, you know, earlier on in the match, you were under a certain amount of pressure. We were indeed, yeah. Uh, County Kilty and Fair Play, you know, they put us under pressure, like, and uh, um, only for... I suppose uh, we were defending, I suppose, good enough, like, and um, Colin there with a few points near the end, we were, and uh, put us up by half time, like. Um, this we know, obviously, is uh, something that you're going to, to say your first county medal is is really something uh, important, is, is something fantastic to treasure. It isn't true, like, to be honest, uh, f like, this year, even, like, I never thought I'd have a county medal, like, or even previous years, like. So it's uh, it's a new experience for me, like, and I, it, it really hasn't sunk, sunk in yet, like, you know. So I can presume finally, Tomás, that you you're glad you made that switch three years ago. I am glad, like, uh, fair play, come back, we like they wish me well before the game, like, and uh, they're they're a nice club, yeah. yeah. Tomás, thank you very much indeed. I'm now joined by uh, three other members of uh, the successful Castlehaven team yesterday, Dini Cahillan, Ray Cahillan, no relation. And um, they were going to call him uh, the own mulligan of the side, but I'll come back to David Burns in a minute. Um, Dini, obviously, you've been there in the past, and uh, I suppose it compares with the, with the two previous victories. Ah, yeah, it's unbelievable, unbelievable for the younger lads and for the older lads. Now they say I'm old, but I reckon I'm getting younger every day. It's, uh, <laughs> looks anyway. <laughs> No, I think I leave that question for a while, did he? But um, I, I must talk to you first about the, uh, the, you know, like I mean, this interview is to encompass everything. The yellow card. No, I, I'll keep that question for later on. Go on. Well, what can I say? Well, <laughs> you man, you deserve this. <laughs> you man, full yellow card over his pocket. I was shocked. I thought, no, in fairness, I thought I was wrong, but you know, that's the way it goes. <laughs> um, Earlier on, the, the, the defence was under a little bit of pressure. I mean, talking to some of the County Kilty lads here today, and uh, you know that the, they reckon that those chances they missed earlier on uh, were costly. Had they got over the uh, bar, I suppose to be serious about it, they could have put Castlehaven under a bit of pressure. I think, uh, yeah, definitely, we could have been under pressure. I put, um, I think there was a lot of nerves in the Castlehaven team in the first half, but after after 20, 25 minutes, the lads got it together, and you know we put it together from there on, and then. I thought the whole team, uh, not only the backs, but the whole, from the backs up to the forwards, the whole team played well, like, from, from I'd say, 20, 25 minutes after, you know. After that, the whole team did their work and Set, settled down. Settled down, and that's it. And Mulligan came on then, and sure. <laughs> Where did you go from there? <laughs> I was, I was come to Sintra back, Ray Kyle, and the thing that struck me about your performance yesterday, Ray, was that you were marking, obviously, a friend of yours, a guy who played with you in an All-Ireland, uh, he played together on the team that won the All-Ireland final, and I suppose that was probably a difficult enough scenario. It was hard, all right, you know, looking at it from the start, we were probably very, you know, we are best of friends, and, you know, when you look at it from the start, how would you, how would you come about it, but so we always talked about it before, you know, before we played, that if we ever met each other in, in a game, you know, whatever stays on the pitch, 
whatever happens on the pitch stays on the pitch. You know that that's why we look at it, and you know here we are today, and we're you know we we'll, we we'll look at it as the we're the best of friends, and you know that's the way we like to keep it. But isn't it isn't it um, a wonderful thing, Ray? If you like, you know, for uh, we say young people who are thinking about taking up sport, that you can actually be great friends with a guy, then have to do a little bit of battle with him for an hour, and emerge as good friends after. Oh, definitely, it is like there's something to look on for, as you said, the younger f the younger players coming up. Do you know, there I played with Connor there with the minors and with the compromise rules stuff, and geez, you know. His father there was was a great friend to me. Do you know what I mean? And tis the as he said in his prayer his prayer profile in the program I saw there today. You know he said all coming through. Tis the tis the friend you make through the GA. Do you know what I mean? Tis the friend tis the friendships you make. Do you know it lasts forever. And do you know here we are and we're, we're the best of friends. Right, I must I must go to uh, the men who uh, came off the bench yesterday and, and played a role in it. David, obviously, um, when you were involved with the Castlehaven team. Uh, it's it's pa it's it's a huge panel effort now. The people who are able to come off the bench yesterday and played vital roles in the game. Yeah, it is really like just, there's no game nowadays. There's that you start with 15, you finish with the same 15. Like really, to be honest, even inter county games now, like you've got to have two or three quality players in the bench to come on and make the difference. You know. Um, you have achieved now. I, I'm trying to think now quickly to know how many medals your father won before you. But obviously to win a county medal down in Castlehaven, it, it's so important if you like. It is really, like I can see there, like I met my father now after the game yesterday, and you can see the joy in his face. Like, and I think we're, I'm not too sure now by saying this, but I think we're one of the first, like we actually are the first father and son to have county senior medals in the club. Like, And uh, it's, it's a major achievement like to have two medals, father and son in the one house, you know. And, it's just, it just, it just brings the whole enormity of the thing to one point, you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't actually realise that. No, that's a nice, a nice record. Dini, um, the colour that was there yesterday and uh, the fantastic uh, arrangement of playing gear that was uh, on the players, but there was one sign on the far side of the pitch, right, uh, which said, Angels from Heaven, and I've been trying to suss out what it's all about, and... Uh, the lads in there, the players are after having a quick meeting, and they said, "Look, we're going to appoint uh, Dennis Callan as 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 the spokesman." So, Denny, would you, if you could, explain where did that come from? Well, if you look at the three faces here, now all you can see is angels. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I, 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 I told you earlier, I know that I'd have to say no comment on that situation, but. I think it was Brian Collins was the <laughs> ringleader in that situation. My sister's going to kill me now over this. <laughs> we, can, can we say, uh, Dini, that it was a, f a, a, a slogan born out of happiness? Definitely. And I'll tell you one thing. It, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though. No, it was a great night. <laughs> That'll do us fine. Uh, Ray, uh, I suppose if I could, I know that that's probably, it's a difficult question to ask a, a, a young man to compare winning an All-Ireland minor and to it to, uh, with Cork and then to go on and win a county senior with his, with his club. Well, to be honest, Polly, I reckon, you know, this, this beats all because, you know, the, the hype and the passion in the, in the club there is, is unbelievable. So the whole parish, the whole parish are behind us. They're training every night. You know, with the last with the last two months has been unbelievable. There's you know, there's been people at the, at our training sessions every night with the last the last two months and it's been you know, it's been mighty. And to win you know, to win the game yesterday was t t t you know, it was it was unbelievable. I never witnessed anything like it in all my life, you know what I mean? It is it is the crown topper I reckon of of, any, of anything. Okay. Dinny finally to you I've uh, I have seen the two previous photographs of uh, of the uh, the team in 89 and the team in 94 and obviously I know that the team of 2003 will adorn Jim Nolan's wall so I'll have to look at it again is there is there a future photographs that I can look forward to of Dini Kelly winning county medals I will hopefully <laughs> hopefully next year again and the year after if all goes well okay. we'll try our best in here I would like to say a sincere thanks to three sporting gentlemen I'm now in the uh, privileged company of, uh, I suppose, an icon of Castlehaven football, uh, Niall Callahan. First of all, I want to congratulate you on uh, winning another county medal. I thought you were going to say I'm playing well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I suppose, Niall, that um, I know you've spoken about it so often in the past, 
but uh, this is certainly a small bit more than a, than a football club. Um, it probably is, you see, there's, you know, maybe fortunately or unfortunately, the only thing they have going for them in Western Gasleben is, is G, you know, and it brings everyone together. And but it, but isn't, it, isn't it good, though, that they have that? I mean... Oh, big time. You know? Big time, there's no doubt about that, you know, um, and as I've said in the past, you know, they've won Junior B Championships, Junior A Championships, Intermediate, under 16s and under 3 ones and what have you. And at the time they had all, they were all just as important as what Winnie a senior is, you know. Um, and you know, fortunately enough, the whole thing has. I, I would say most fellas that have played for the club over the last 40 years have won medals, you know, which is fair play like is a lot to. Um. Another aspect of the club that strikes me, and we've spoken to uh, uh, other people earlier on, is the way that it's all done locally. That you have coaches that started off with Ned, Padraig Bork, Jim Nolan, and then yesterday James McCarthy. That all of this coming from within and coming from within the club itself. I suppose at this stage we'd be. The, I'm not saying we're the only club, but we we would be one of very few that. Um, Fortunately enough, had never to go outside of the club for a coach or whatever, you know. Um, there's always someone there um, who's, I'm not saying qualified enough, <laughs> but maybe have the balls to take the thing on, like, and yeah. take it to the next level, you know. Yeah. Um, we just talked briefly about the match yesterday, but I suppose before we go to that, uh, I would say one of the best kept secrets was the fact that you sustained. Uh, uh, a muscle injury during the weekend, the way it was kept quiet. Yeah, Wednesday evening I went for a kick around with Larry. Um, and any time I go for a kick around with Larry is a disaster. Um, I can assure you. <laughs> and I uh, tore a tie muscle and, you know, I, I just kept it very much to myself. I couldn't believe my bad luck, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but uh, I only told, I think I told Patrick Friday night. Knowing that part is a good man to keep a secret as well. Um, and told him I was in trouble. And I think he told James on Saturday night. And he told him to keep it a secret. <laughs> and uh, just before half time yesterday, um, Colin Crowley came out, <laughs> ran out the field, and he said to me, He said, Jesus, he said, Will you kick the ball into me? He said, I'm skinning your men. I said, I can't kick it. <laughs> and I couldn't. Yeah, you because know? I, I remember speaking to Colin. Um, during the summer on a few occasions when I met him and uh, you know he was emphasizing to me that uh, the importance of those kicks coming in from you uh, you know from his own point of view and the fact that it could not happen yesterday certainly put him in the, under a bit of pressure earlier on yeah it probably put us under a small bit of pressure you know but um, I hope that Colin now like when he'll be captain of the car team or whoever's going to be captain of the car team will emphasize that to Billy might be a, might be a way back for me <laughs> I wouldn't rule it out yet, my friend. Um, this interview, or, uh, this video, obviously, is about uh, a brief bit about the county final yesterday, but it's also hopefully to encompass a lot of the great things about Castlehaven, and uh, the very fact that you're living in Cork. And I know you've been asked this question so many times. Do you know what possesses you to keep on coming back down here for all those grueling training sessions and? tough slogs of matches and what have you. Well, I suppose I still have age on my side. <laughs> well, <you know>. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a big factor. Um, I don't know, I suppose it's, you know what I mean, living in Cork. Um, I love my job. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I have a lovely wife, five kids. Um, but unfortunately, I've never settled as a, you know what I mean, a Cork City man. And... Uh, it's probably a note to getting home and probably to a small degree maybe I'm making a fool of myself that I still think that I'm a big part of like home to me is still Castlehaven end of story if someone said are you going home you know what I mean I'm it's going to Castlehaven Castle yeah. like in Cork like I, I'm going to Wilton that's it <laughs> you know um, it must be happening for you as well to see that uh, 
if you did promote in the next 10 or 15 years that there is good young talent now coming through in the club. How can we get rid of this? <laughs> 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 um, there is. There's, you know, I, I suppose we, we, we don't have huge numbers, but I think in fairness they've been fortunate enough that the numbers they have had there has been a, a decent amount of quality, you know what I mean? Um, and in saying that, you know what I mean, like yesterday, you know, we had Paul Nan who was born in Canada. We had uh, Tomas Leary, who was born in Lyft. And we had Alan Sheehy, who was born in Lyft. You know? Um, so, you know, going back in time, we had Larry. Um, before that, we had Martin Connolly. Um, and we, it, it, it's just not all complete Castlehaven either. We have had our outsiders, you know what I mean? Now, I, I wouldn't count Alan No and Tomas um, outsiders because all their parents were from the parish, you know? But, um, you know, fair play, they came, they joined us, uh, they rallied, um, and they won county medals. Um, I know that you have uh, a huge interest in decoupling and farming as well, and I presume that sometime in, I don't know, the not too distant future that you hope to become fully fully domiciled down there, or is that an option? Oh, it's big time. I would hope it's big time an option. Now, I'm not too sure if my wife would be too impressed now if she heard I was going to farming, because I'd say if she had her way, like she put a for sale sign up in the hall in the morning. But um, if she could get a good auction here, probably. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, but there's very few of them around, buddy. Because chance is going. Um, but uh, I suppose sometimes it's hard for a person to kind of be objective about themselves. But uh, I mean, uh, running through the, the the session here this evening and talking to so many of the lads, uh, I don't know whether you realise it or not, but the influence you've had in so many of these people is. Uh, I, I'm going to use the word frightening in, in a good sense. Like, it was only a fart in the go whenever I see Ray Keane was interviewed and... Or he wasn't interviewed, he was on the Dumphy show or whatever. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say that you're, you're a bit like Dumphy <laughs> nobody. Or anything like that. But, um, like, um, the one thing he, he actually... When Dumphy pitted him with some of the greatest soccer players in the world, you know, he was actually very modest in 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 his answer to it. You know what I mean? He said, he, I think he said he, would be, he was very passionate about the whole thing um, and that he worked hard in his game and he genuinely didn't think he was up with some of the grace of him. Um, from my point of view, I never kicked the ball with my right leg. Now, that's not to say I couldn't put it into your mouth from 70 yards with my left leg. <laughs> But I would have been limited. I was very limited. Um, I can remember years ago at a Cork Minor trial or whatever. Um, I was actually so bad up in Carrick de Vera. They also went away looking at the farm up there and some of their freezing and cows. Uh, and I was brutally. Um, I'd, l I'd like to know who the selectors were. They obviously saw something. Jeez, I don't know what they see, like, <laughs> you know, but um, I suppose at this stage, you know what I mean, I've been there, done that, and um, I'm not saying I'd be a steadying influence on it, but, you know, it's very easy to dictate the way these games go. You know, all you have to do is hang around the middle there, like, and size up a few fellas, and, you know, the whole thing falls into place from there. It's interesting that you make that point, because there's... Um there's a gentleman who plays hurling that I know who was moving on in years. And uh, when he was younger, he was prone to the odd red card and what have you. And now he looks at it in a totally uh, different perspective, this ability to be able to read the situation without get, getting overly excited about it. Exactly, you know, there, there's no doubt about it, you know. Um, <laughs> even yesterday, like, believe it or not, yesterday's match, like, I actually marked the match referee going back about 20 years ago, you know? And um, 
like I, I hope now you're not into this uh, with, with, with the language and things like that but uh, about five minutes into the second half um, I was found that I couldn't run I couldn't kick I couldn't run and um, and you were 40 years of age 40 years of age yeah, yeah. still quite young and um, Colin won a ball out in the uncovered stand side and he was coming in and I kept shouting at Stephen Connolly I said Stephen run, run, run for the pass. And the next day I heard this voice coming up behind me and he says, run yourself, you bollocks. He says, you're in a lot better position. It was actually the match referee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, had he some tune up in his own right. Um, the match is over now and uh, we're here 24 hours later. Um, what does this one mean to the whole of Castle Townsend and Union Hall? Well, you know what I mean? We have won three and We've been fortunate enough to win three under 21s as well. Uh, they've won June and intermediate. They've all been very important, you know. But I suppose we're here now and this is the important one at the moment. But um, we leave here this evening and we go back training on Friday night and the most important one is the next one then. Niall Cahillan, it has been a pleasure. As we wind our way through the evening here in Ross Carberry, uh, we come across the club secretary and uh, I think that uh, talking to Niall Callaghan uh, earlier on, he made the point that outsiders were always welcome in uh, the Castlehaven club and uh, I suppose, Finn Bar, I should address you first of all, is that you would be considered maybe as one of these uh, outsiders. Yeah, as they, say, as they still say in Castlehaven, a blow-in. A blow-in. Blow and they always say that as a blow-in. But have been well accepted, I must say, by the club. <coughs> Excuse the voice, very hoarse, okay. but uh, accepted very well. Have been involved with the club there now for the last three or four years. Have enjoyed it immensely, I must say. It's a great honour for anyone to be involved with Castlehaven, but I suppose even a greater honour to be as no an officer of the club, and I mean that. Yeah, uh, and I just want to talk to you some more about, uh, about being an officer of the club, because everybody can see the... If you want to get a drink there... Don't if, we have a point over there for you. Uh, everybody can see the work of the selectors because they'll say, oh yes, the team played well in the day, the team played poorly in the day, or what have you. But the job of a club secretary in the time leading up to a county final, and yesterday people were so impressed with the logistical operation that was put in place in terms of selling all the the uh, the paraphernalia, jerseys, tops, what have you, the, the whole merchandising system, organising buses. Like, is this nearly a full-time job at this stage? Well, definitely I'd say a full-time job, but I'm a firm believer whether it is whether you're doing at work for your boss or whatever you're doing for a club, you either do it right or don't do it at all. Because there is no place for complacency, especially with a club like Castlehaven. Everything has to be down to a T. I I think it's a bit like Kerry. If you don't do it right, you're gone. You asked me the question about secretary of Castlehaven Club. This could not be possible for me to go through the amount of work, only for one person, and that's my good wife, Mara. She's an unbelievable person when it comes to football. Football in her life is first, and there's many in the evening. She would not see me until nine o'clock, and I owe this tribute to my wife, Mara, and family. Uh, one of the aspects that really impressed me, being truthful about it, uh, Fem Barra, at the night of your... Uh, uh, some big social event was the underage structure that seems to be so strong now in the club and when you couple that to what the adults are able to do you know you'd have to say the future looks good wouldn't you the future looks good and i think you know spoke to james mack during the week and we were very very cautious of the media and we had it worked out to a tea we arranged a press night in castle Aben last friday night but we made sure there would be a lot of people there so that the media would get bogged down this is the way we do these things. But James, I thought, was one of the greatest comments, one of the, the worst slips he made for the year when he was interviewed by Michael Scanlon and he asked him, what is the secret? And he was live on air and he said, Michael, the one thing we always arrange, he said, is we make sure that the underage train before the seniors, but he said, Christ's sake, don't tell anyone that. <laughs> and that was live. <laughs> A degree of honesty can never be uh, uh, refused, if you like. And... Uh, I suppose finally, Finbar, uh, as we wind down here in uh, Ross Carberry, you're delighted, I presume, 
that you made that transfer, the short journey over the road? Well, you know, I married in 89, I suppose, and, you know, I got the chance to play with Castlehaven that time. I didn't take it. I continued my football with Ross and, you know, won another junior medal after that. Transferred to Castlehaven then. Maybe I didn't give him a lot of service on the football field, but by God, I'll tell you, I'm going to give him some service as an officer. To a dedicated and an efficient, hard-working secretary, I'd like to say, Goramila Mahagut. I'm now joined by uh, three other gentlemen as we make our way through interviewing Castlehaven people that were uh, involved, past, present, or maybe in the future. First of all, I got uh, Mike O'Brien, who was one of their stars of the past. Mike, uh, I suppose, was a different type of feeling yesterday, or was it from being a player? It was different, uh, definitely probably a different uh, feeling, like up there in the stands. Yesterday was kind of um, a feeling saying she should wish her out there, you know. But uh, overall, I thought the lads played perform great. Uh, especially in the second half, they took the game plan, were well on top, but overall I'd say the last 10 minutes when the pressure was on, I thought our backs were all standing and they played un unreal there in the last few minutes. Cut the ball out, especially uh, I'd say Liam here, Liam Collins, and Alan She cut the ball out in the last minute there, probably a vital goal, cut it out and um, I would say overall our defence was all standing, but overall the team was was absolutely brilliant, played play, play really well. Mike, I think that impressed uh, a lot of people that travelled up there yesterday as neutrals was the whole sense of colour and the involvement of both sets of supporters. Definitely, the, co the colour there was um, was unreal yesterday. Um, when I came into the into the stand yesterday, I thought we were outnumbered by, by clan people. They were all overs. But um, next thing, when the, key, when the team came out, uh, the flags went up and cast the oh, Jesus said uh, you know, it's just unreal, you know, and, you know, when, as a pass player, you always say, like, jeez, we should roll there. But um, the feeling and the light and the excitement of the whole thing was, 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 was unreal. And when the game started, I thought we were very, very hesitant early on. We, we, we missed a few chances. Clan had a few chances early on. We missed about two or three goal chances. And then they took the game to us. We... At half time we were point ahead. Second half, we were well over them. Then after that, just the last ten minutes, we were holding our breath and saying, I wonder, you know. But we were always holding and saying, Jesus, it's, it's not towards us in, in, in 97 again. But we're fading these fellas, they're young fellas coming up, they're coming through. There are young players, we are pride in them, and they're wearing jerseys you now, and I'm saying, ah, these guys will get us through. And they did get us through. Larry, um, you were down there early yesterday morning, you were waiting for the players and they came in. Um, it's well documented why you joined this club. Their huge sense of work ethic and I presume yesterday uh, you were really proud of their achievements. Well, it's, it's, uh, first of all I would like to say like, that since I came down to Castlehaven, like it's been, uh, I suppose, home from home in a sense like, that, you know, I would have been kind of football mad myself, but uh, I would have never thought like, that there was a good bunch of people down here the same way as myself, or even worse. <laughs> but, um, uh, well, yeah, but it, it's a sense of uh, pride and passion and appreciation for uh, players to play the game and wear that jersey. And that's something that's unique. And that, that hasn't came overnight. That has come from, you know, the founder and members of Castle Avon. Like, and Liam here sitting beside me, you know, um, you know, Liam's granddad like was was one of those guys like, and you know the the depth of passion like it develops from there. And like people say like that, you know, I contributed, I contributed a little bit, but certainly the the seeds were sown long before that. And you had the the culmination of a lot of families, a lot of families that were kind of, you know, large families that helped Castle and through it, and and probably no more so than the Collinses. And I thought yesterday it was a fitting. Uh, tribute to a family like that probably uh, Liam's dad Christy who has had you know the last 12 months you know a hard you know a hard 12 months and I think it was if there was ever justice I think it was there yesterday and it was emotional to see uh, Liam his son lifting that cup and give a typical uh, passion and energy and determination speech typical of Castle Avon and I thought it was a fitting tribute to the whole day and I suppose Larry when you look at their uh, 
the underage structure that's now in operation in Castlehaven and that so many of the uh, last county on the 21 teaming team coming right if you like yesterday that um, you'd be positive about the future of the club without a doubt and I think that's since 1979 I wasn't around that time uh, you know I was up in the, the short grass county in Kildare at the time but 79 was the first time that Castle uh, ventured through to a county final and you know unfortunately uh, they got beaten on the day but I think they learned a lot from that day and, and they developed from there but I suppose 89 was the breakthrough that a lot of people see and like and the, the youngsters seeing and um, Liam at that time was a young kid here and I'm sure he's seeing and the emotions ran through his mind that day that you know, at the end of the day, it's 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 a player's day, and you know, as Mike has said, it's always great to be out there. And you know, every every dog has his day, as the saying. It's a very true saying. But like '89 was probably the day there was the breakthrough, and all of these young fellas seeing that day, and they wanted to be there, and rightly so. And they've proven that you know these guys can do it. And like when these guys move on, and please God, to have a few more counties left in them. When they move on, and as you said, the, the future is bright down Castle Haven, because I spent the last few weeks down there, didn't get the time before when I was involved with Cork, but uh, got the opportunity to go down a few times in the training sessions and watched it closely. And way before the senior team trained on nights, you had all those kids out there training and, and putting in work. And fair play to all the people down there that's really working hard and getting them out there and doing it. And that's what it's all about. And as I said, when you wear that blue and white jersey, uh, certainly gave me the most happiest times of my life and the most pleasurable times of my life and I certainly am very, very thankful to Castle Liam people. Thanks Larry for that. Um, Liam, you were the captain yesterday and uh, I suppose if you were to read the papers beforehand there was a lot of talk made about the men you were going to be marking and uh, like probably under a bit of pressure being the team captain and marking a guy that if he played well yesterday it could have made the difference between Castle Liam and winning and losing. True enough, but uh, uh, I didn't read the papers because you know the way they'd be hyping you up like yourself would there, you know. <laughs> and um, they were they were calling they were calling that Castlehaven would um, beat him fairly handy. But going to find you, it is never handy. It is always 50-50. Like uh, no bad team makes a final, and Clan surely put us put a, put us up there yes, yesterday. Um, was there any stage in the? I, I mean, you went eight points ahead, Liam, right? And uh, I remember we were looking down the commentary box and saying, would something happen here? The clan of Kilty would get a goal to make a game of this. Uh, then the foot came off. Well, I don't know whether the foot ever comes off the pedal, but they got the goal. And obviously, a little bit of pressure on again. There sure was. Um, Paul Lucknan was going for it, and uh, Parry Griffin got the ball and just went between the two of us and got a good shot and goal, and there was pressure on at that stage. But... We, we kept the uh, heads, we didn't panic, and we rode the storm, and I suppose we couldn't wait to hear the final whistle. Uh, when you hear, you know, Larry talking there about going back to maybe your grandfather's time, and talking about the, and other people have mentioned it as well, you know, winning of the Jonah B Championship in 1969, and the West Cock in 1974, then the Jonah and the Intermediate, that there's a huge sense of history now attached to this small club. You know, uh, I remember, you know, when I came around this neck of the woods first, all the sense of history seemed to be around Clan and Kilty, but the more I think about it now, there's a huge, a huge sense of history now attached to your own club. That's true, yeah. Um, but like a club co has to come from somewhere and they have to make their own history and they have to, they have to, you know, keep on striving to achieve the best they can. Um, when you went up yesterday to accept the cup, obviously it had to be an emotional moment. It was very emotional, but I suppose it hasn't really hit me yet. <laughs> Probably I'm after a couple of drinks uh, <laughs> last night and this morning, and you know, I think it'll take a week to set in anyways. I was under the impression that the reason you were late this morning that you were milking cows all over the place, but anyway, we'll come back to that again. Uh, uh, a fact that amazed me yesterday was when you looked down at the pitch as you were getting the cup, I just happened to be standing up alongside you, and, and like that sea of colour from a small place, it was, it was just awesome, I thought. It was unbelievable to see even people from outside the parish coming to support Castle Avon. That's what it's all about. Um, the neutrals there, like you'd see people and coming up and shaking your hands and saying, well done, and I'm not from Castle Avon, you know. It means a lot, but it means a, ho a great deal for everyone in the parish. It's brilliant for the parish, and to see all them youngsters there dressed in their jerseys and they're looking up at us, hopefully someday we can be looking up at them. To the three of you gentlemen, I say a sincere Gurumila Mahagut. As we come to the end of this uh, video production, if you like, uh, I would like 
to thank the so many people that contributed in no small way uh, to its production. Uh, the various players, club managers, supporters, uh, people around Union Hall and Castlehaven, and many, many more, uh, too numerous to mention. It was a, a unique and marvellous day for Castlehaven GA Club. They won their third title by defeating near, near neighbours and rivals Clannacilty on a final score of uh, Castlehaven one goal and nine, Clannacilty one goal and seven. Till the next time, Slán. You sports men of Ireland who are anxious for football, a word of advice I will give unto you. Proceed to Cork City to this year's county final and look for a team dressed in white and blue. This clash of the Titans between Clan and the Haven will be played in the park by the banks of the Lee. Our own parish boys do not dream of being beaten for victory and glory awaits them, you see. For catching and kicking our yard up and passing our playing this game with courage so true. If you want some delight, when fixed up with excitement and cheer on the haven in white and the blue. A veteran Nile is the pride of our country With county staff calling and Bernie to score Look out for three Harley outstanding to view And Larry and she will be to the fore You see Miles and Lim Collins with Ginny and Fred DC and Burns and others for sure and Raymond and Stephen and Gallant Lachnan will be part of this victory for the white and the blue. For catching and kicking or the art of and passing or playing this game with courage so true. If you want some delight when mixed up with excitement then cheer on the haven in white and the blue. Now, who are the men on the state in the post? They're the pride and the fame of Connacilty domain. Their name for to mention, I do not propose. But runners for the title, they deserve to be. So here's to our team, their trainers and mentors. And all our supporters, so loyal and true. And here's to the club in your fifth county final. The chair on the heaven in the white and the blue. For catching and kicking of the art of and passing of playing this game with courage so true. If you want some delight, when mixed up with excitement, then cheer on the heaven in white and the blue. We shot it!